February 4th, 2013, we'll call the meeting to order at 6.05. We have a quorum present. Um, Councilman Schrader will not be in attendance this evening. Um, Councilman Strother should be here shortly, but we're gonna go move forward. The first item is to um, discuss and provide input to suggested changes to the park ordinance. Mr. Sly. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it's been helpful in the past to put uh, ordinances and initiatives on in a workshop environment so that we can openly discuss those things and 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 solicit input from the council. Uh, and in in this case, the park ordinance obviously has uh, a lot of attention, and, and rightfully so. Uh, our our parks are nestled in neighborhoods all across our community uh, and and we've got to do a, a really good job of coming up with a park ordinance that would allow the police department to enforce infractors um, and so we challenged the parks and rec department and the parks board uh, to come up with a fashion of s some kind of a, a park ordinance and what you have been provided in your packet is a start to that process. Uh, ordinarily, uh, Adam Adams w would be here to present this particular uh, action to you. Uh, unfortunately, he and Tony Jaramillo are both at uh, prepaid uh, training uh, events that conflicted with this date so he's out of town uh, so in that light I've asked uh, Larry Lentzner who is the president of the park board to step in on on uh, Adams behalf to kind of give you a historical uh, perception of what's what we've gone through to the to this point uh, we have uh, actually reviewed upwards of 18 other communities park ordinances and we tried to find communities that had dog parks uh, and, the, and similar features that we have through our park infrastructure. Uh, and hopefully what the park board has done over the last three months or so is gleaned best practices and pieces from various communities and put that into this product that you've got tonight. And what I'd like to do at this point is uh, turn the mic over to the president of the park board, Larry Lentzner, and have him go through that document with you. Uh, and again, this is a workshop environment, so as we go through, if you have issues or concerns or, or ideas that you would like for the park board uh, to consider moving forward, um, you know, this would be an, uh, an appropriate time to have that interchange. Uh, we would love to be able to bring back to you for action, a park ordinance, uh, the end of February. As you know, our you know spring is right around the corner. I think they're already having baseball signups. I'm not sure yet, but soccer, soccer is getting uh, soccer is moving forward. So uh, we would certainly like to have uh, some structure and enforceable structure uh, before all of that gets into high gear. So, Larry, go ahead and well, uh, Madam Mayor, <coughs> Council. And Town Manager Sly, thank you very much for having me this evening. Um, this is a workshop format that is, again, for you, Council, and I'm real excited because I think uh, many of you have been here for Council meetings that went on and on and on, and I love this uh, workshop format because we can get all of your questions, concerns answered, get all of your feedback in a concise manner, and then, the board, in this case, the Parks Board will come back. And my understanding of this process, uh, and kind of give you a little bit of history, is town staff... Uh, recognize the need after the citizens um, were kind enough to pass the parks bond combined with the PID dollars that were out there was roughly 7.4 million dollars uh, that has been mostly we got a few little things left to do uh, but mostly been allocated and we've seen a significant growth in our parks and rec facilities which is outstanding because I don't know what we'd have done today without it uh, with all the the dramatic growth that we've had in, in families here in Trophy Club over the last two years so with that being said, it was time uh, for the Parks Board, now that those facilities and the construction of those facilities is pretty much complete, uh, to look at an ordinance uh, along with many of the other communities. And as Town Manager Sly mentioned, there's 18 communities that we looked at. Uh, there's no sense in little old Trophy Club Texas reinventing the wheel. 
Uh, let's look at what 18 other communities have done, what's relevant for our community. Uh, look at that and incorporate that into something that uh, all of you can look at, be proud of, and something more importantly that we can administer throughout the town in a fair and just manner to make sure our facilities are safe foremost and that they're properly maintained uh, in a safe and, and amenable manner so that they're still around for our citizens in the future. So uh, with that said, town staff started about five months ago on this process. Uh, the Parks Board got involved at some lower levels about three months ago. And then our last Parks Board meeting was almost exclusively dedicated to going through this ordinance page by page and seeking feedback from all of the Parks Board members that were in attendance, which we had pretty close to the full Parks Board in attendance when we went through this. So uh, we're bringing this to you tonight in the workshop format for your feedback. My understanding it will come back to the Parks Board. Uh, for some other work once we get your thoughts and feedback and then back to this council uh, for a vote hopefully by the end of February. So uh, with that said, I mean you've got it all in your packets and I know I don't need to sit up here and read it to you verbatim, uh, but what I do is I'll just highlight each section and have you, if, if you all have any comments related to it, or do you'd like me to give you feedback on the thoughts or some of the reasoning and logic behind that particular ordinance, uh, please feel free to comment. Um, you know, I think the definitions is pretty self-explanatory. I don't think we need to go through those, but I think, of course, it's important to have those. Oh, Mr. Rose, in the definitions. Uh, very quickly, uh, as, <clears throat> as I look through the entire ordinance and I put the note at the top of definitions, do we need to identify specifically which parks are involved? I mean, because we've got the linear trail, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't know whether that's termed as a park, but it has mm -hmm. some park-like uh, facilities in it. Uh, and then the other item I had in the definition section is under baseball facilities. Mm -hmm. In the definitions, you specifically mentioned Indy East and Indy West. Correct. I would personally take that out and not because if you want to have a baseball field at another, uh, at in another the future. venue, then it would not require a change in the ordinance. Yep. So I would just scratch that within little. Or, yeah. or I, I, you might want to leave that and then say, or any additional facility used for. Okay. So you that could, we've you, got you, that yeah. clear. You could work it both ways. Okay, great. That's great feedback. Uh, with regard to highlighting each individual part, um, from talking to the other towns, you know, sometimes less is more and more is less. So in, that, in the spirit of that, the less is more was that this is all encompassing parks and rec uh, ordinance. So in less otherwise highlighted, that it encompasses any land that's dedicated or owned you know, by the town and managed as a park facility. So that's kind of where that came from, keeping it pretty broad. And then where necessary, where you've got specific facilities, and uh, we kind of honed in on specific things uh, and highlighted Harmony Park, for example, uh, or such as, you know, hours that are open when you're having, you know, public use, et cetera. Okay. Okay, so in section 1-10-2, uh, I'm sorry, <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I looked down. Under What's park property, mm -hmm. that same section. I think you have a, a little contradiction in there, and I think if you added the line that you use every place else within the corporate limits of the town in that section, mm -hmm. because the first sentence says, uh, shall mean a park, playground, athletic facility, or any other area in the town owned or, town, or used by the town, and that kind of indirectly incorporates TCP. That's true. And so I would I would put within the cor within the corporate town limits in that section, um, to clarify that we're just talking about town parks. No, I think we meant, I, th I think they meant to include Trophy Club right. Park. Yeah. <clears throat> you want your yeah. park ordinances uh, don't to we include have a Trophy Club Park ordinances separate? Yeah. Not no, from it, this aspect. Kind of what the situation is, I, from my recollection, uh, Councilmember Mayor, we did mean to include uh, Trophy Club Park from the standpoint of the motorized recreational vehicles, et cetera. Where you're kind of referencing is the federal guidelines, of course, Trump anything that the town would do that is in the uh, lease agreement that we have. So I don't think there are any conflicts, but there is, there are some ordinances requirements in Trophy Club Park that are dictated by the Corps of Engineers and the federal government. I don't think they conflict with this, but we do have the, I don't know if the authority is too strong a word, but we can certainly ordinance and require, you know, certain activities to occur and not occur inside the Trophy Club Park. Well, then I'm confused. Okay. Because I was pretty sure. I'm hard to confuse too. No, I'm easily no, confused. No, trust confused. me, yeah, you can get confusing. Because in the next section, <clears throat> you're talking about the parks within the town limits. Mm -hmm. So, 
if you do that and then I get back over here on prohibited things like ATV vehicles and all right. that, if that's including Trophy Club Park, uh, then you can't have your ATV events and stuff over in your motorized vehicle things in Trophy Club Park right. because it doesn't say just an organized event. It just says you can't have them. Yeah, I think it highlights – the one thing, and you're exactly correct, we're kind of a unique town here in the sense that you've got Trophy Club Park and you've got, you know, our town ordinances. So I think we'll go back and revisit that with your feedback. But I think we need to be very clear because there are certain activities that we definitely want to restrict, such as dogs off leashes, that type of stuff, picking up dog <coughs> instrument, things like that. Want to, we want to branch that out to the entire parks and rec facilities that we maintain and manage, which would include Trophy Club Park. But there are definitely certain ordinances and things that would be you know, strictly within the domain of the Let town. I suggest you add a section in here someplace that would just address the activities at Trophy Club Park that won't be addressed in the regular. I don't because right now it's confusing. Well, I yeah, maybe the suggestion might be: Would you guys relook at this and make sure it's clear? Yes. Between no with Trophy Club Park versus um, the rest of the town. Gotcha. Because we do need to have some rules in there. Yes. However, you decide to make it clear. Just for, just to clarify, I, I'm pretty sure we have a TCP ordinance on the books today, um, and 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 we'll go back and and clean that up. Okay. Uh, I, I think the in, the original intent for this particular ordinance was for those parks within the corporate parks. limits of yeah. the. Yeah. And the if town. that's the case, then let's state that. Yeah. yeah. No problem. We'll clean that up. We'll, it's not a problem. We'll at clarify all. that. I, I want to make sure we've got something on the books for TCP as well. Yeah. Because I know from the standpoint of the Parks Board, when we were discussing this, you know, I think it was pretty muddled as well. I think there were certain activities that we'd like to restrict across all of the facilities. Right. But if there's a separate ordinance, you know, that we didn't discuss that in detail uh, that evening. But we'll clean that up. Not a problem. It's great feedback. Okay. Through the definitions. I know. <laughs> Almost to page two. I know. Uh, section 110-2. Um, property, you know, park <coughs> property, generally prohibited acts. Uh, does anybody have any comments? Yes, sir. I have a few. Oh, go ahead. Uh, you know, need to need to get the attorney in on this one, but it looks to me like the last two sentences are either redundant or conflict, and I'm not which sure. Which last two which sentences? Which uh, of the first paragraph? I'm sorry. Okay. Where it, yeah, the following acts are prohibited on all park property. Period. And then, except as otherwise provided, it shall be unlawful. Well, if it's prohibited, you would think it would be unlawful when it's... And actually, I made that redundancy. And the reason I did is because when I'm drafting complaints, I need the prohibited language. It helps me out in drafting a complaint. But the reason that it was it shall be unlawful is just so that we could bullet without complete sentences that list. So, see. Okay. That, okay. It was done on purpose. <laughs> and I guess this very this very first one a talks about riding so i guess that shows that it isn't yeah. trophy club park <laughs> mm -hmm. i know it's interesting because you know in my notes here this deals with potential uh, equestrian issues so an unleashed dog in trophy club park that comes upon a couple of horses riding back on the uh, the uh, um, east side would be a potential hazard to both the dog more importantly probably the horse rider who might not be on the horse if something happens Right. So but we'll definitely have to. But it says to ride. Is Pardon me? Paintball guns back there too? No, there's no paintball guns. Okay, I thought y'all had paintball in, tournaments and stuff. No, and we we have not had any special events. Okay. But again, a lot of the language in here is at the discretion, you know, of special event, special event permits. So that doesn't mean never that we couldn't have a special event paintball thing back there. But as of right now, for you to just drive in and start shooting around is not uh, and, authorized you know, under this ordinance. I I had. Um, a question on this because I did have a, a question from someone as far as discharging firearms or, or bow and arrow or whatever mm -hmm. is that or is that not allowed in Trophy Club Park hunting hunting is allowed in Trophy Club I Park I thought so and yes. we don't have the option to, to no, prohibit no, no, no. that yeah we don't have any either. there's there's duck hunting that is authorized in Trophy Club Park and I think there are a couple a, a, a couple special years bow hunting permits for deer that are issued each year but um, we don't have any domain over that, and and uh, um, you know I don't know that it's been an issue in the past. I mean I hear them when duck season starts right out on the lake. 
Yeah, somebody somebody asked me about it recently because they saw someone walking in. But again, I, I think you're I right. We're going to have to. We're going to. I think the probably the thing we're going to have to do, and this is good feedback because I think when this is written by town staff, a lot of the focus is is inside the town and our own facilities. But then I think your brain kind of moves out into other concerns that we've had as a town because we do oversee Trophy Club Park. So I think the pulling out and having a specific section dedicated to Trophy Club Park right. of, of do's and don'ts, I think will probably help. And if there's already an ordinance, then maybe we can just reinforce that and add some new language to that. So that's all very good feedback. Okay. I think for purposes tonight, though, we want to focus on those on amenities the within limits. the corporate limits. Of yeah, the we'll town. do that. Okay. Uh, again, on B, mm -hmm. uh, carry any firearm. I don't know how the concealed handgun permit works with that. You can't prohibit concealed handgun carry. Okay. Chief, yes, sir. unless they post a 30 point, a 3006 uh, sign or we're selling 51% all our income comes from alcohol in the parks, they can't prohibit uh, a concealed carry Correct. person, right? So they, but they can do that. They can post a sign, yes. Okay. Yeah. I was just. Does that answer? Yeah. Asking a question. Are you asking to post yeah. a sign? Yeah. My my assumption uh, in I that guess. situation is that you know in other town ordinances of the 18 that we reviewed that that was probably a common language in the ordinance, so we adopted it because it made sense. But you know I think this council will have to determine if we want to post the signs that would be necessary to enforce that. I think the posting of that sign will prohibit concealed licensees, concealed okay. handgun licensees from carrying inside the park. Okay. 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 So the question is you can prohibit people from carrying that are not licensees, but you do need to sign if they are. Okay, great. Thank you. So, uh, and what we're saying by then, this then is that we, we, the ordinance recommends that we do not allow them to carry that's what other communities of the 18 okay, I, have gone and that's where adam is going down that road now i'm all from the great state of texas and yeah, you never know what's going to happen but I don't think you, you know people are licensed and authorized to carry them i'm not i'll let the town council make that decision i can get you the all the information on that sign so that uh, you can have them or the town can have them made and posted especially not at Facebook. if you need that you know, having, the having spent like 12 or 15 years in the little league system yeah that's what i was thinking yeah. I, can, no. I can speak to this issue pretty well i don't think we want any concealed handguns no. in the <laughs> stands yeah yep. the, sign, the sign outside the door is mm -hmm. 30.06 that's okay. the sign great all right awesome okay uh, number three number c number c yes ma'am what what's the point i like for instance Somebody has a, a remote control sailboat and he wants to operate it in the, one of the amenity lakes. What, what would okay, be the so issue? On, so in C, uh, most of these items are potentially has, hazardous. Now, when you're talking about flying, the flying uh, planes, airplanes. you know, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. They could potentially hazardous and hurt somebody, plus there's a little bit of noise pollution uh, with those as well. From the boat perspective, uh, all the boats, the lakes that we have, are irrigate uh, several of them that we're responsible for are irrigation so they have pumps and drains and the issue has been that if your boat gets stuck out, stuck out there runs out of gas breaks you will have kids or people going into the lakes oh, and going into the lakes could be a very big hazard and potential not only uh, hazard but liability for the town so restricting any type of uh, activity on those lakes that would result in them potentially going into the lake is probably a good thing to do Yes, sir. And this one is strictly from a point of standardization on C, where it says Director of Parks and Recreation. Mm -hmm. Delete of Parks and Recreation because definitions director defines it as Director right. of Parks and Recs. Okay. The rest of them throughout the ordinance are director. Okay. Got it. Somebody helping me with this because I don't I have that. No, I'm, I'm making Okay. It. Thank I'm you. Thank it. you, Mr. Sly. Appreciate I'm, it. I'm taking them, but. I know we're asking a lot of questions. No, that's okay. This is tell great. you, <coughs> as I read this, shot. what I felt like you talked about 18, found, you found everything anybody could possibly prohibit and put it in here. Well, I. And I guess I just felt <coughs> some of it. Are doing a part. Yeah. And prohibited it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I. I I mean, I think, I think from a standpoint, you know, of town staff in the town, there's, you know, there. there's common sense are built into these. Okay, so we're asking the, our police department uh, to also use their discretion upon certain things that may or may not occur in and amongst people who are coming and utilizing these facilities. Um, so better to put it in here and then use your own discretion uh, to determine if you're going to enforce it to that level 
but if it's not in here and you do run into a problem, you don't have any legal or any ram, you know, recourse to go to our police department or other parks and rec department people to address the issue. And I think, you know, being a member of or a citizen of Trophy Club for many years, uh, there has been one thing after another that has come up over time that is not in our ordinances, not in our language, uh, that handcuffs, you know, our yeah. public servants here in making decisions. So better, unfortunately, in this day and age to move to a more, you know, in restricted mode and then authorized through special use permits or through the Parks and Rec director, which you see throughout here, uh, you know, giving that or, or, you know, through special events or whatever, giving the... Uh, the flexibility there on that side as long as it's communicated and blessed by the town and staff and this council ultimately as we discuss the uh things so there are a lot of things that's at the direction or wavered by the director mm -hmm. uh one i want to make sure that the town manager is comfortable with that level uh, of authority on all those things and the second thing is uh, <laughs> if you're comfortable with that then do we need something in the ordinance that says something about appeals will be made at the town manager level uh, Adam and I actually had that discussion uh, and you know if it comes to turning lights off at, on the baseball field or uh, allowing something that would otherwise be prohibited without his approval uh, I'm very comfortable with that and okay and you know if, he, if the decision is not what the customer was hoping for uh, I have no problem appealing it to the town manager I mean, I mean if we can do that I wish to address that subject. <laughs> My biggest concern with this whole ordinance is that 13 times, 13 times in this ordinance, we allow the parks director or his designee to either interpret, change, or define something about this ordinance. And I think uh, we don't do that in any other ordinance. It's always town manager or designee. Uh, and I have a problem with that. And nothing, I wish Adam was here. Uh, I can't get Adam to return a phone call. So I have a little problem with telling him 13 different times that he can, that it's up to him. I was this, and we got, I'm, I'm sorry, but we, we went through this last summer during baseball with those baseball lights being on and there's nobody over there playing, nobody's taking care of it. And I'm going to, talk very strongly when we get to the lighting section that we define a turn off time and it's not interpretable that the lights go off at a particular time <coughs> whatever that time is and I'm sure some of the citizens we want to be happy and balance the baseball stadium or the baseball players and their stuff but the residents have have a right to expect that at some point in the evening those lights are going to go off well, if, if, if we change the ordinance to town manager or his designee, we're still talking about the same person. <coughs> I want a defined time. <laughs> I want a defined I, I understand well, we're that. We're going to get to that. Yeah. Okay. I understand what you're saying there, but what I'm talking about is, you know, uh, several times in this ordinance, it, it, it allows for the director of parks and recreation some purview to allow for a special event or something like that. I think and if it's the, and if and if we change done. that to the town manager or his designee, it's still but the same person. But you're going to end up de designating Adam, That's right. and so I'm back to where I was a while ago. I think if there needs to be an exception, it needs to be done when there's a special event planned and and it's written down, but still there is something to find that I don't want them. Here, here's my here's my concern. They're playing a baseball game, and it's the ninth inning and there's two outs and the last hitter's up and 10:30 comes along so we we want to or let's say it's we've already extended it and it's the now it's the dead oh go ahead and play and finish we can't do that we we, we can't do that we have to we don't write our other ordinances that way where we get to jicky them around so I, that's just my feeling on this i just I don't like having an ordinance that 13 times gives somebody, whomever that person would be, the authority to change the ordinance or interpret it the way they want to interpret it. That's my two cents. Um, I mean, do you want to get to that? or? Well, I mean, well we I, I'm not talking about the lights or anything now, but in the basic ordinance, I mean, it, it's kind of funny, but at the same time, here's, I'll give you my side of this, on, and we're not talking lights now, just everything else, okay? okay? 
Um, my feeling is that we said no, prohibited so many things. If you took an absolutely hard line, it would be much more difficult to figure out what you can, you, where you don't want to leave yourself in a trap mm -hmm. because there are things that we do during an event or when somebody rents the park or something like that. And if we, I think it would be extremely difficult without having that latitude to define all of the parameters in this situation. But based I'm on not, that, I'm based not on that why have an ordinance? Just ask the park director. Because you have to give them the, the basis to be able to um, control it. That's the point, is that giving the police the basis to be able to control it. I don't agree. Well, okay. Well, well I would like to say that uh, <coughs> the park and rec director reports to the city manager. It's his job to run the parks. So it seems to me like that he would be the one designated to make decisions. <coughs> and if there is a need to variance, then he um, or she would interact with the manager as well as maybe the council if that was called for. But he's, that person is the manager of parks. That's the way I see it. And his, so therefore, his man, that person, that will be designated 15 times in there. Well, but well, the I mean, chief answers to the town manager. Well, and, and he enforces the laws, but he doesn't get the, the latitude to interpret the law the way he wants to interpret it. If he wants to, if he wants to say, well, today we're going to do 45 miles an hour uh, because we're going from 35, then I'm just going to do 45 today. I, I, I just think we, if we're going to have an ordinance, let's have an ordinance. Well, we didn't put that in every case. I think we put it in cases where an exception would make sense. Yeah. And, and, you know, for example, we didn't, we said here, to swim, bathe, wade, wade in, or pollute the water of any pond, lake, or stream. There's no exception there. But to plant or place any tree, shrub, rock, building, monument, or other structure except in specifically de designated areas for such purpose by the director. If that's something that makes sense that you might want to, you know, in one sense, this is a hard rule. And in the other sense, well, there's maybe a reason you might want to allow it. And you've given them that authority, that latitude. Is That's what the way I'm looking at it. Well, in that case, Madam Mayor, you know, we've had situations, whether it be Arbor Days or where we've actually had citizens plant a tree on Park's property and cultivate that tree and take care of that tree and then they it's automatically assumed that it's their tree and unfortunately something happens we need a new sidewalk we got something going on and now they're here before this council talking about you destroying their tree or the trees yep. when it actually uh, you know that's not their property and right. that's happened in the past so from the designee if the, the parks director knows that hey you know what there's nothing wrong in that particular location under these particular circumstances planting a tree because you want to donate a tree to the towns you know, tree, tree city USA, then let the parks director have the autonomy and the flexibility to be able to do that. And, and that's what, that was my point, just that some things it's appropriate to have the flexibility and some things it's not. And that's what I think we're And, and that's, again, that's the whole part of this workshop is for all of you uh, to give us this feedback. And then, you know, it's going to be coming back to the parks board and back to you as well. So I think we can definitely explore there's, that. Uh, there, there's a dramatic difference between a police department and parks and rec. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Parks and Rec, by definition, is gray. It is a it's a gray area. I mean, people come with creative ideas all the time that we haven't even thought about yet, and you know, we want to be able to have the flexibility to pursue the idea if it's a good idea or or not. Right. Well, I just want to point out, Mike, it wasn't managed last year when I'm when I'm referring to lights, but the lights weren't managed last year, so. And we'll get to lights in yeah, a minute, I think but so. without, but without. But to give, to, to go to your example about the lights, and uh, I, I'll, I'll wait until. We, we can get there. I'll wait until we'll the get lights. there. Yes. I we were talking. I talked about the director. I can move on down the page just a little bit. H. Yeah. It says. H? Yes. For, yeah. For such purposes, by the, we need to add director in there. Get you to fourteen, Danny. Where? Uh, oh, typo. H. Yeah, director. H. There's a typo. Yeah, I did spot another typo in here as well. There's definitely a few typos yeah. that need to yeah. be cleaned up. I think you guys all yeah. know that this is the draft. But thank you. 
Council Member Rose for helping me clean that up. Um, any other uh, comments on C, D, E, and F? I mean, the, the plants, the, the swim and bathe, uh, to make or kindle a fire. I think uh, under the make and kindle a fire, I think we're going to add one thing that came up post this is to during burn bans, to add some language around burn bans that would be, you know, state or county driven that we would, of course, uh, enforce those. And there would be no, even in city uh, designated areas, no fires during those periods of time. Right. So we'll clean that up uh, as well. We kind of caught that late. Um, discharge any noxious gray water, leave litter. I'm on J, uh, K. You know, this is kind of a, the K is the general catch-all to give the police department the authority uh, to pretty much take care of any public nuisance issues that may be occurring. I mean, there have been incidents, and as you bring, from what's kind of how I want to phrase this, when you bring certain people together at athletic events um, and it gets heated, uh, there can be everything from opposing teams to formerly married moms and husbands that can cause lots of problems, and I've been there and seen it. So we want to make sure that the police department has complete authority and the flexibility and use their judgment to remove people from the premises if necessary, hopefully not in handcuffs, but hopefully just time to maybe for you, for you to leave uh, in as, that case. As you remember, Council, over the holidays, this would give the police enforcement ability you know, during the holidays when the kids are don't have anything else to do and there's college kids coming home for the holidays and that kind of thing, there's a national game of fugitive that's spread across the entire country. <laughs> uh, and it's a glorified cops and robbers and that caused problems in our community this past holiday. Uh, and, you know, they were using our parks to assemble to figure out what they were going to do, and then they would spread to the four winds inside the community. Uh, and we had no authority to, I mean, they were they had every right to be there, even though that they were rustling around on people's property and rustling their fences and gates and that kind of thing. Uh, we, you know, if we found them doing that, that was one thing. But, you know, Being in the if, if we, uh, this would give us some <coughs> some teeth to be able to, Disperse that group and be done with it. Okay. Um, does anybody have any further questions on this page? Uh, K, L, or M? <coughs> Comments? I'm going to go to the next page, N through O. I have it on N. Yes, sir. Uh, the last, uh, last phrase there says, or any other public property. Mm -hmm. I think that may exceed the... the uh, Authority of the parks the ordinance. Of yeah, the, that makes the, sense. Yeah, of the stat of the stat. Yeah, so that makes sense. Okay. Uh, anybody have any questions or concerns around the sale of food or drinks or concessions or? Uh, I thought that was a little bit um, restrictive. Mm -hmm. Here's a, here's another example of you know approved written agreement. Um, I mean, we've had, I, the only issue I can think of that's come up, I mean, we, we get requests from vendors for people, and, and usually it's related to a school function. So, for example, uh, and this is, again, where the authority of the, of the Parks and Rec director can be of, you know, guidance and help. So, a group won Destination Imagination, and a group of kids at Beck Elementary, that's a big deal. They were going to nationals, going up to Tennessee or Kentucky, I think it was Tennessee, and they asked if they could come out and sell snow cones during the baseball games, to which we were more than happy to allow you know, citizens, young children, to come out and raise money uh, for an event that, of course, represents our town. So the ability to do that. However, for the ice cream man to back up into the parking lot right at the front of the, you know, by the facility when they're selling those things as concessions, uh, you know, that can be a problem. Or an unauthorized you know, selling of items uh, could be a problem. But again, the discretion of the Parks and Rec director uh, in this particular area, uh, if it's a you know, school-driven or fundraising, a community event, they check with the, uh, the other park. The other thing about the Parks and Rec director is when these things come up, they will reach out or Adam will reach out to other organizations that could be impacted and get their feedback. And most of the time, most of, the time of course, here in our great community, it's not an issue. So that's a, another example of where some discretion is probably advised. Is that... Your yeah, question? it says I, I was someplace, um, and where was it? S somewhere in town, and they were trying to raise money for hunger. They donate to hunger, and they were told they weren't allowed to sell homemade cookies. Right. 
I thought that was a little restrictive. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, everybody has bake sales. I, I'm with but you. But that's not this, right? That's a separate thing? No, I, I mean, it is, but it isn't. It's at the discretion to sell in general, but I don't think we're highlighting, hey, if we give you the authority okay. to sell something that you can't sell homemade cookies. I don't think we're getting to that level. Do you have any thoughts, Mike? No, uh, were they going to go to a, a public park and set up a shop, a lemonade stand kind of deal, or, Actually, or just I think they, on their front doorstep, or what? They did it, like, on a corner in their, you know, on somebody's property. Yeah, that but that that would have nothing to do with what okay. we're talking about here. Yeah, we're right. talking about bringing, selling, selling those kinds of things on uh, public right. property. And right. what it is is a separate ordinance. Right, uh, and, and right. I draw a huge distinction between profit-making businesses, i.e., the ice cream guy, right, that does that for a living, using public property to to make a profit, versus a five hundred one c three trying to earn money to yeah. send kids on a special trip of some right. sort. Okay. And then the same thing goes to P, just for your clarification. <laughs> That's where we've had uh, people, let's, let's just say the, the local semi-pro tennis player who holds their lessons up at the lighted tennis courts, just goes up, says, meet me here and there. I mean, that town needs to be informed and, and part of any and all of those arrangements. Okay. Uh, and that's what that uh, P is about, because that happens on a regular basis. Same with the batting cages and baseball lessons. A little bit difficult to enforce at times, but here in the ordinance, we have if the we know it happens, then we have the option to get out there and, and discuss that with the uh, potential people. But in P, uh, it says, except when operated or sponsored by the town. Correct. Do you, uh, if you have somebody out there that's teaching tennis. Right. Uh, that's not operated by the town. No, we did do one before. We did do a yeah. tennis camp in the past okay. that was set up and done by the program. town. Okay, but what I'm getting at is, do you want to say uh, operated, approved, or sponsored? Because you could approve somebody come and say, I'd like to do this, mm -hmm. and it could be approved. Well, that's what we're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah but the way this is written, it's, it has to be operated or sponsored by the town. I, okay. If it's approved, is it sponsored? It's sponsored, approved, or do we want to clean that up? Leave that one to the attorney. We can okay. add approved. Okay. Thank you, Tricia. Okay. I'm so does anybody have any heartburn about the golf cue? I mean, I think that's pretty common sense. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to get hit, golf balls flying around, that's et cetera. A, that one would help us. <laughs> yeah. that help. But it happens, though. People go out there, and especially at Harmony, and sure. drop their wedge and start hitting wedges. And can't, we, can't, we need to enforce that. So... To bring, carry, or transport a glass container, any, any concerns there, I'm sure. Possess alcoholic beverages, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, I'm, I'm on tea. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. Can't you, can't you have alcoholic beverages at TCP? Yeah, but this, well, this is not TCP. This is not yeah, we're going to, we, I think we're, oh, yeah, I think, never mind. I think, Councilmember Mayor, we're going to pull that TCP. We're going to clean that up. Uh, One way or the other, we're going to clean that up. Okay, no on doubt. the golf piece, do we not have anywhere any, um, option for somebody to pick off balls? Uh, not really. I mean, mm -hmm. Trophy Club, oh, Country Club on the... Yeah, on yeah the, but you have to be a member of the country. I completely understand, but not here in the town. I mean, I don't think that's... I think that's pretty common, Madam Mayor. I mean, when you look at the town ordinances and stuff, I mean, because the damage that a wedge does to yeah. your grass and your turf is just irreparable. Not to say anything so. about the surrounding... Yeah, so for the most piece. part, that's kind of common. I mean, if you're, okay. if you're not going to the Country Club, then you're going to... I don't know where the nearest, to be honest with you, it's been a little while, but I don't know where the nearest public, there's one in Colleyville yeah, off of 26. Keller. 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 Okay. Okay. Oh, that's right. There's one out, to have Keller Hazlitt. That's right. Okay. Okay. Um, and then, of course, the gambling. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. T, uh, the public address system. Uh, we have some issues in the past where a team uh, comes to a ball game, and their big thing is to play their music loud in between the innings. And some of the music these days yeah. – that some people would listen to, other people would consider very offended, especially if they know what they're actually saying. So we want to have that in there to clean up any music other than otherwise town-sponsored. I think pretty for any uh, person six years old, restrooms, I mean, it's kind of mundane, but, you know, any young kids that need to go in with mom and dad, that's fine, but people using the opposite restroom because the women's is backed up and the men's is not or vice versa. It doesn't happen often, but we want to ordinance that. Yes, sir. Can I go back to the... Uh, 
sound system. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't you add those powered megaphones too? Yeah, we certainly could. Isn't that an amplified well, public amplified, amplified, amplified? Yeah, system. amplified. Okay. But we could probably cl clarify it. All right. Bullhorn type yes. thing. But if it would be a it, you say or device. It says or device. Or, yeah. device. or, device. or device. Okay. Or device. Gotcha. So we're covered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. If you say we're covered. Councilmember Rose, we're covered. <laughs> I've learned that. Patricia, you can just make sure we're covered. On I'm making notes on things to define as we go. Through. Thank you, Patricia. Appreciate it. Any other uh, questions, thoughts? V, uh, W, uh, loiter. I mean, that goes to the fugitive issue, uh, the loitering in the parks, etc. Um, I'll flip over to uh, Freedom Dog Park. Uh, I have a quick question. I'm sorry. Um, on E, uh, when you say E for scheduled uses, like if somebody um, where are you, please? I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah. On, on W. Okay. Sub E. Oh, you're so okay. You're so you're ahead of me a little bit. Oh, am I ahead of you? Ahead. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. You're yeah. You're well ahead of me. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Then go ahead. I have a oh. W sub A. Okay. Uh, yes, sir. W sub A says, uh, unless the use of the fa such facilities has been properly scheduled, can you improperly schedule it? I'd scratch the word. Okay. Yeah. I guess you can't mm -hmm. improperly, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I but see, I, I hear what you're saying. I, I guess the only improperly would be town. you spoke to the baseball association and knew the field was empty, but you didn't talk to speak to the town but it staff. Says scheduled with so, the town. So. Scheduled with the town. Thank you. All right. Um, Freedom Park uh, B, hours of operation. I mean, there's no lights out there, so I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, you can get there a little early in the dark while the sun's coming up, and you can stay a little bit till the sun's gone down. Uh, Independence East facilities may remain open till 10:30. It's a C, so I think this is where we'll have some good discussion. Um, Town Manager Sly, Madam Mayor, I'll let you. Kind of lead the discussion and i will be happy to comment and give your feedback from the uh, parks board perspective uh if you don't mind Rolling. mayor I, I just wanted to address what council member mayor was talking about with the hard and fast time frames uh, we really do are, are making a concerted effort to get what little bit of revenue we can out of this park and to to invite teams from out of town to participate in this wonderful facility that we've constructed and pay good money to do so for those lights to blink off with two outs and the last and the man on third and the batter at the at the plate doesn't appear to be I think we've got to have some kind of latitude in there that okay. says the point I was making uh, <clears throat> if you say the lights go off at 10 30 or 11 and they can be extended until 11.30. Now, they, so at 11 o'clock, the parks director, somebody calls him or however they contact him, right. and they say, we want to extend it until 11.30. Right. And then it gets to 11.30, and they're not quite finished. No, I think so at which point, do the, I'm, I'm just saying at some point in, in this, whatever ordinance that we come up with, there has to be a time right. where the lights go off. Absolutely agree, and and that would be a. I mean, at that point, if if uh, if that latitude was authorized, you guys now have till eleven thirty, and the lights are going off. Now they know they've got thirty minutes to get this deal done. Okay, so and now and me. and if it's and if it's two outs and the man in at the plate, and it's eleven thirty, you know. Let me play devil's advocate just for a moment. I believe that reasonable people, if if uh, if these baseball gentlemen know in advance that at X o'clock the lights are going to go out, we can start the game earlier so they have plenty of time or something. But I believe reasonable people can come to a reasonable time where we don't have to have any discretion about having to extend hours. Well, I've been, I've been, my kids have played a lot of baseball in the past and sometimes you can't totally control. However, I have a different question if I might just for a second. 
How many tournaments do we have in a year? Let's see. We have currently scheduled right now. About. We have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine max. Nine max. And that would be potentially two in the fall and seven between Feb the end of February and the middle of July. Because one of the thoughts that went through my That's head. That's max. Because in a normal schedule, I agree with you. You, be, you should be able to schedule your games. And we can. You know, when they're, they're off. We can. During the recreational league schedule, right. those times can be really solid. And what I'm thinking is that we. Okay, now hold that thought. Yeah. Remember you said. Yeah. I got you. No, I got it. Yeah. Trust me. And I can assure you that. What I'm thinking, and, and I'm thinking this where I'd make the times a little earlier, but these times with the latitude would be for tournaments only and allow and make like for instance we say they can be open until 10 30 from sunday so we'll let's make them 10 o'clock <coughs> except in the case of a tournament right now can i address that yeah so my understanding what I'm just what the situation we run into is the the this is my knowledge and and i know this is a workshop so i can't really pull on anything beyond this so i'm going to give you my experience uh, and things could have changed or well, I'll kind of tell you the challenge. The community is growing very rapidly. We start the games, uh, not we, I used to be the president, now I'm the chairman of the Parks Board. The, um, the league starts at 6 p.m. or 6.30. Most times it's 6.30. Average game takes an hour and a half. So now you've you got one game from 6.30 to 8, and you have another game from 8 to 9.30. Those are the recreational league times. What tends to happen on occasion, not normally, but what happens on occasion, uh, let me back up for a second. You've got games, depending on the age group, that run an hour and 20 all the way to an hour and 50. The 12 year old games go an hour and 50, all the way to 14, go an hour and 50, then they go down to hour and 40, then an hour and 30, and all the way to hour and 20. So each age group has a different range. So hence it affects the potential for that issue on each field. So if you're dealing with the 14 year olds, you've got hour and 50 games the and game, you have why are you dealing with 14 year olds on these fields that's indy four is where the 14 year olds would be i'm okay. thinking the whole complex so indy four is where the 14 year olds the the 12 11 and 12 year olds which play hour and 40 would be over on indy seven so as you come around if you think about that indy five is the younger kids should not be a problem on that field nearest to the homes you got plenty of flexibility built in with the t even the 10 p.m but when you start running around to the older age groups and you're looking at longer game periods, well, then you run into one little issue of an, a kid who hurts himself. You know, the umpires are late. You get extra extra innings. You would run into problems. There's no hey, doubt about I, it. You, Getting two games in a night, which is vital within our community to be able to get this league done. Good explanation. You're helping me out here. So you. you're saying what we need to do then is set hours by fields. We could. Have that here. You could get to that level. Well, you have east within and west. within the within. Let me let me caveat there to to the mayor's point. With outside the tournament world, because the tournament world's a different world. But within the recreational league, we could certainly say that field number five, which is the closest to the homes, on Indy West, could have a different firm time than some of the other fields. You could certainly do that, okay, Councilman and Mayor. The, and outside that, well, you wouldn't be having those kind of tournaments on that. Do you have tournaments? Oh, yeah. That U8 age group is okay. crazy. Uh, it's the most teams, as a matter of fact. So uh, you're talking nine time, nine tournaments. So you're talking about nine weekends at max, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, per, per year. Nine weekends per year. Can we define those weekends in? Pretty closely. I mean, I mean uh, within reason. I mean, not in the ordinance, but yeah. if, if the council went that way, could you define the nine weekends that we know that, that these hours would apply, these nine weekends before the season starts, so everybody would know and we would be looking at it? I or, would, or if you couldn't define the dates, limit them to nine. You can only have nine. I mean, if that's where the, you want to go. The thing about I the mean, defined we're, we're, dates is we're at the mercy of outside organizations to call us and rent the fields. So we have these windows of opportunity, which are usually middle of May through the middle of July. And then you have a couple other weekend opportunities before the spring season starts, before our recreational league takes over. Sorry, I'm not trying to be difficult, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying. But I am. I mean, because 
I think I we want to have we want to have a really good. We want to get good utilization of the field. Yes. We want to give the baseball leagues the best product available. Yes. And at the same time, we want to protect the homeowners because they have investments and they have the quality of life that they right. need to. So, mm -hmm. so somewhere in there, there's a balance. I agree and, with you. And it's our job to get that balance where we don't overburden anybody. Right. Well, I mean, the only thing I would... But, and that we do turn the lights out when we say we're going to turn the lights out. And I agree, Councilman Romero. The only thing I would add is that you know, that original field on U7, U8 was supposed to be competition level four lighting. We changed it to level two, which we could do for younger kids to, to handle the concerns of the citizens. The, if you look along that, there's a 130 foot section that exceeds one candle foot of lighting in the backyard of those homes. Certain of those homes are very minimal impact on the candle foot because of the design and the way those lights are set up. Okay, with the co we spent ten additional thousand dollars of parks bond money along that fence to begin the screening process to add that. I can assure you, we have heard the citizens and done a lot of things as a parks board and as a town staff to address those concerns. And I am more than willing, from a tournament perspective, or as a parks board chairman, to try to find some more common ground. But we have a rapidly growing community. We have a lot of children, over 600 now, that are looking for these to use these facilities. And if we can't do two games a night during the weekend, if part of or during the week as part of our recreation league, we will have a problem and not no, be no, utilizing I, I, our facilities. I'm cool with that. I just okay. want to mitigate and and work toward something that's acceptable and that we will adhere to. Yes, I'm it's, completely it's very fine with that. that. We adhere to what we say we're going to do. I agree. Yeah. And some of the light problems, Larry, are not yeah. the field directly, but from the field yeah. across. There are some of those, unless we've been able to get them adjusted. Well, I mean, it's there's really the ones on the other side that are causing a problem because of the way they're. I understand. I mean, there's there's ambient light. It's always going to be there, but I mean, when you look at photometric studies, and you know, we rely as this town does, as this council does, on engineers and the experts in this area. You know, we're within ordinance, and when you look at all these other 18 communities, there are multiple instances of where they're blessed to have their facility away from everybody. Uh, and it's usually next to the dump or something out in Louisville. But there's others in our community because of the land that was accepted and the very limited space that was available as a result of the highlands and the PID. We have what we have. And we spent $4 million on that facility right. to meet the needs of our citizens. And it has to be utilized within reason uh, to maximize the activities in, in that property, right. whether it be from returning investment on for some tournaments, which we can certainly work with, to taking care of the needs of everyday, you know, citizens that want to utilize I think that facility. You can clarify that. I, I think, think we can. I think, and we come up with some good times. I think the citizens will be happy, and I think the league will be happy, and that'll make can you, life easier. For everybody. Can, I, can I just generally ask the council: Are you comfortable with the proposed times that are here? I haven't heard anybody comment about the existing. I, times I would like to see the uh, during the week earlier, if. Um, it's not during a tournament. Now, the tournaments are usually the weekend, right? The tournaments are generally uh, Thursday night. Uh, sometimes we'll go two games on Thursday night in the bigger tournaments, and then Friday, Saturday, Sunday. The biggest challenge to the citizens uh, on the tournaments that I want to be very upfront with is that Sunday night, Sunday night, those are mandatory single elimination games, and they are packed because you want to maximize eight games a day on the fields which means you can have eight teams per field per tournament. So with the fields that are available over there, without using the Byron Nelson practice field, which they have actually you know, given us to utilize in the past, seven fields, maximum 56 teams. So maximizing the opportunity there for the revenue is to have eight games and max them out. Now what happens is that championship game on Sunday is at 8 o'clock, but you've played six games on those fields during that day. So. A little run over here, a little run over that's, there. That's there was an incident last in this last summer. I'm aware of two incidents that have occurred. There was an incident this summer when they had an injury, they had an umpire get sick on the same field, and the lights were on at 1130. And what was happening is was tournament, the trophies were being handed out to the championship team who won the tournament, and parents are out there taking pictures and everything at 1130, 1145 at night. We even, I addressed that with Adam. We talked about that and in the future. If we've got tournament, trophies to hand out, move over to the concession stand and turn the lights out. 
ASAP and hand them out underneath the concession stand, which is lit with security lighting. But that was just an example of an incident that, that can happen in the tournaments and where the flexibility by this council would be much appreciated under those circumstances. Okay. Um, can we, uh, in, in the interest of time, uh, no, we have some other items, I think, mm -hmm. to talk about here, but yeah. can we look at this again and see whether we can't bring in the time See if we can't come with a better compromise. Of, uh, that's my feeling anyway. Yeah. If we can bring down the time, except for tournaments, and, and make it slightly earlier, if it can work. Yeah, I think we can. Um, I mean, even if we if we get to a point, Mayor White, where the other thing that you notice, I don't know if you notice in the fine print here, is we designate Indy East and Indy West a little bit different. And the reason is yeah. we know that Indy West does not impact have a direct impact on any homeowners. And in the years of that field, we've never had – any complaints except been the old lighting system when somebody left the lights on all night but the, the new lighting system that doesn't happen anymore right. so uh, i think that you know there's definitely a compromise there as well if we really need the opportunity to play to have be a little later on that field this the league etc can schedule uh, accordingly if that's necessary and to mitigate the impact on major slides the recommendation that we limit it to nine tournaments mm -hmm. uh, uh, a year is a good Mm -hmm. well, uh, well, I mean, as I, as I say that, I mean, yeah, uh, we, I'm also getting nipped at the heels about generating revenue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and let me highlight one other thing. There are, there are tournament opportunities for our community where they would go all week during the summer, you know, a Tuesday through Saturday, and there'd be nonstop play, and it would generate a significant amount of revenue. We were scheduled for one last year. It kind of fell through, but there's a potential for that. I just want to highlight that. Yeah. It does not always then that thing. nine doesn't mean anything that you told me earlier. <laughs> no, that's one tournament. It just runs tournament. for five days instead of the traditional three. One of the other things that I think is an issue, because I've driven down there a lot of times mm -hmm. late, mm -hmm. and I don't know how best to say, because I really appreciate our staff mm -hmm. being conscientious about it, but mm -hmm. I've seen them dressing those fields at 11 o'clock at night. Yep. And, you know, I think that maybe we could do that in the morning. <laughs> I know it's that, a problem. That, I, I that does result. The tournament, Mayor White, that's what's happened. I mean, that's a decision on staffing of do you, would, while they're there maintaining the integrity of the fields and cleaning and wrapping up, do they want to stay late or come back first thing in the morning? Or you got seven fields. Now you need more people yeah. in the morning so versus the same crew in the night and the evening because they can get half of them done at night mm -hmm. and half of them done the following morning. So we'll, it's just a manpower we'll issue. that process. Okay. I just have one um, question. Oh, may I ask about please. Harmony? What? What are, why would the lights be on at 11 o'clock at Harmony Park? What would they be doing? You know, I, the, the soccer is played out there. At 11 o'clock? It's getting late, later and later. Again, we're experiencing phenomenal growth, Councilmember oh, Tiffany, and their soccer game usually was wrapping up at 8. But now that we have the new lights out there, I think he's just kind of covering himself for exposure. We're thinking of. They're not doing that currently? Use. No, yeah, not currently. Did, but as this region I'm continues to explode, I mean, there's only yeah. limited okay. facilities. Yeah. Okay. I um, think we're, are we wrapped up on time to where you have to move? Yeah, we're getting pretty close. Oh. Um, but we should okay. finish. We should go through the. Okay. Um, I did have one. Are we finished on that page, everyone? Page 9 of 96, yes. Okay. Um, I, I had a question on C on page 10. Um, I have one on A. Okay, go ahead. Page 10. Mine are not uh, numbered. Yes. All right. Where am I at? Yeah, I have one on that too. 1 10 3. Okay, vehicular regulations. Uh, would you clarify for me? Uh, 15 miles an hour? Yeah, 15 miles an hour. How does that affect park use? It comes to because it's within that park. What's the. Are we saying that the speed limit on Park View is 15 no. miles per hour? No. No. I think we're talking parking lots. Are we? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. My my question my question specifically on A and B, mm -hmm. aren't these items that should be in a public safety ordinance as opposed to a park ordinance? Aren't they Aren't they misplaced? <coughs> I mean, I, I I I concur with what they say, but it seems to me that it should be a general. Uh, should I would be in. But certainly doesn't hurt hurt to have it. Could be in both so places. Yeah, does it hurt to duplicate them? I guess would be you, my. If you duplicate them, you run the possibility later on of creating an unintentional conflict. Okay. So my thought is, if is that they should be in a public okay. safety. We'll check right. that with the league. All right, I'll leave that. I have a real problem with C. Patricia. As I get older, yeah. yeah, and I'm about to get my rascal. <laughs> yeah. How am I going to ride my rascal or motorized wheelchair? Uh, 
uh, handicapped people under this are ex uh, they can't they it's can't ADA. they can't go. Yeah. And also those little scooters the kids have. Yeah. Yeah. I, you, I think you're the, that's duly noted, and I think we need to allow for any handicapped access or you know Vehicle. access for for uh, carts you know carts or whatever. Right. So I'm gonna yeah. whatever you want to call those. Golf carts, little scooters. You know, yeah. golf carts. I think when he's thinking seat. scooter, the scooter tradition is those little kids on the two wheels. <laughs> I, 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 I'm about, I know what you're talking about. about you're talking like about. I know what you're talking about, Council Member. Trying to sell me one now. I'm 65. They can come out. Oh, I know. <laughs> Medicare at its best, right okay, there. Okay, but but let me tell you, on the like for instance, those little electric scooters, the kids mm -hmm. ride them to school all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, are we really saying we can't do those? Well, I think I think the issue within the park. Madam Mayor, is if you run into some other little yeah. kid on Ooh. that scooter, that's the problem. You know, because when you have these, when you have all the kids, I mean, we all know we're out there at a baseball event, the fields are full, and it's not just little brother or sister playing on the baseball field, it's the three and four year old that are running around that mom or dad, usually mom, are trying to keep track of. So I think we're trying to limit uh, within discretion any type motorized vehicle, you know, running into a toddler that's enjoying the park. I think the golf carts are probably going to want to go along there. <laughs> no. We need to look at that. Okay. okay. We can certainly look at it. I mean, I, and I, and I you know, the, the, uh, you know, the, the access from a standpoint of uh, the scooter you mentioned, Councilmember Mayor, I think that's very relevant. I seriously I do. I mean, I've, I, we've had, you know, grandmas and grandpas that have come to watch tournament baseball games that are on those vehicles. So I, I think that's yeah, a very good that's catch that we should acknowledge. Adam E. Well, you can uh, you can adopt that by either a speed limit on them or by by need. Okay. And assisted to go yeah. do that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, item E on that section. Mm -hmm. I don't believe you can check with the chief or you can check with the attorney, but unless we erect uh, signs about towing, we can't tow vehicles. You're required by law to have a sign and who's going to pick it up and where it's going to be. And I had that discussion with Adam when he was talking about this part of the ordinance. He's aware of that. Okay. Okay. All right. Cool. I, I, and here again in those sections, I think we need to see if that doesn't also tie into a public safety ordinance and would yes. be there and spread it in here. No problem. I think, you know, the, the spirit of what we're trying to do, whether it's duplicated or not, is to make sure that the police and our PD have access to dealing with any and all issues, you know, within the parks and that people are informed and educated as to the rules you know, thereof when they attend and events in these parks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think there's definitely going to be some gray area, as Town Manager Sly mentioned, that we need to clean up. Yeah. Okay, on Section 1010.5A, mm -hmm. that um, there's a typo in there. Yeah, not, right? Uh, yes. Person shall not ride. Yeah, correct. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yeah, I caught that one. That was the one I caught a little while back. Yes, sir. I have a question. When I... Uh, under exemptions, why are town and mud vehicles exempted from all of these rules? We have we have work uh, gators and mules that we run up and down the linear park with, as an example, and things yeah. like that. And their trucks, you know, access <coughs> the uh, parks too. Um, and that particular one, by the way, ten ten five. Mm -hmm. It's it's head it's Can't headline prohibited floor, acts. Right. But then it says the use of roller skates, roller blades, inline skates is permitted yeah oh it's under prohibited acts but now it's saying it's permitted and then the second sentence is where the not should be but i right. wonder why the whole thing is under prohibited acts so could you look at that well let's clean that up yeah let's use two different ordinances <laughs> yeah i think we I think, <laughs> I think we got a little cut and paste i think i think we got late in the document and started uh hallucinating a little bit there we'll clean that up Okay. And on G, I don't. Why? What's the deal with the food for training? So where, where are we at? You get. Are, you, are we done ten five? Why? Why are we allowed? I, uh, where are we? We're we're on uh, section section one dash ten dash five use of tobacco products. Okay, that's where. Uh, I I have a comment here, and I have to have to read it again. But I've got proliferation of no smoking signs. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, I see. Facility where signs prohibiting such conduct are posted. Mm 
Okay. Uh, this, this town does not have a smoking ordinance, period, so they for can municipal buildings or anything like that. Wow. And we've chosen not to have a smoking ordinance so that we wouldn't have to cross that threshold. Um, generally speaking, there are communities that have made their communities no smoking for all intents and purposes, all public places. Um, you know, when I, when I go out to the baseball field, you know, there's, there's a lot of, I'd call them dads, who, you know, do this kind of thing and right. chewing tobacco and, and, I mean, that's what they did. That's what they do. I, I, I don't know how you feel about it. It's going to be hard to enforce. I'll tell you that right well, now. I hate the thought of the cigarette butts. Where, where Adam is really kind of honing in on, and we were as a parks board, is to your point, town manager slide, that's a unique situation there. I think he's more focused than we were on the pool. Uh, the pool area inside the splash park, et cetera, is an area very enclosed where you probably, if you can do something, you probably want to do that very firm in that area. Right. But well, outside of that. Why don't you just draft it for that area and try to. I'm just trying to figure out. That, no, I think we can do that. Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. We can do that. Anyway, I, that's I do why, agree. That's why we want to bring that. Well, you know, well that's this why is we're basically saying unless that you can, if you put it, if you decide to put a sign in an area, there is no smoking there. That's right. all it's saying. So, <coughs> unless we specifically. I would just specifically work on the area that I don't want anybody smoking. And right. And that's kind of what it gives us the flexibility to do. So basically, the perspective of the Parks Board uh, is that if there's a problem and it comes to our attention, then the sign goes up, the ordinance is already here. Right. So boom, stake the sign, no more smoking here, we've had multiple complaints, sign goes up, we don't have to come back to this council and say, hey, we need a new smoking ordinance here in the Parks and Recs. Yeah, and see, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Because Trying to think ahead on occasion, trying to. <laughs> any one place, you're going to have to have a sign there. <laughs> yeah. Because yes, sir. otherwise people won't know. Well, but it's like the town manager said. We don't have a no smoking ordinance, so wouldn't it be better to just pass a, a, a citywide smoking ordinance that said that same thing, and that way we could put a no smoking sign on the front door? Well, it might, but we're here now. Uh, I, think, I, think, I think that's a whole other issue. I'll let you guys issue. handle. <laughs> ten, ten, ten points, ten days, six. Peanuts sure. and sunflower seeds. The yes. paragraph below it addresses more than that, so we need to adjust the title. Okay. Because um, it says nuts of any variety. Okay. Peanuts. <laughs> yeah. Shelled nuts, walnuts. The shell of the I, I understand. Yeah. But I would. I had, I had the same note, and then it says that they can sell them during a tournament. So I'm figuring out. Right. Yes. What's the difference? Well, I, I can help you with that. So well, I'm, go ahead. during the tournaments, people are going to bring their stuff in. And to town manager Sly's point, if somebody's given up tobacco so they can have some sunflower seeds, I don't want to take that necessarily away from them. Plus, you got all these outside citizens coming to the tournament. Restricting those types of things during the tournament could be a big problem to enforce, and it would kind of give us a bad name amongst the tournament community of where to go play in a tournament. So because those fields are rented and they're paying for them, then it's maybe worth it for the town staff to go through and clean up the seeds. However, during our rec league, when our community is paying for that bill and those peanuts are everywhere, you know, the baseball association is compromised with, with Adam in saying, hey, you know what, we won't sell them at the concessions because we understand it's kind of a little bit of a maintenance nightmare on the drains, but during tournaments, really probably need to have that available and Larry, we're paying you know for it. What you, just said? you don't want to get a bad name with the outside people, but it's okay to get a bad name with the rest No, of but but <laughs> it's kind of funny you <laughs> well, say that. Not. We're willing to compromise to not sell them. I will promise you, Councilmember Mayor, we will not throw anybody out of the parks to have sunflower seeds, but the, the baseball association has agreed due to some maintenance issues that let's just go ahead and not sell them and not have them except during tournaments when it would be very difficult to, to manage. Yeah, really I thought it was a pretty nice compromise because it's a nice little revenue stream, but I mean, we understand Adam and Tony's frustrations with peanut shells and sunflower seeds. Well, Plus you got just peanut a general iron. question, but isn't this the problem only in the dugout? You know, you actually what happens the is contract. they blow them all out. And if you look at the drains, the way the fields were designed, uh, Councilmember Struther, there's a, the drainage are along the edge and they clog up all the drains. Oh. 
So it becomes a problem even in the dugouts and in the areas where the parents, I mean, I've seen a dad go through a whole bag of peanuts right there in the stands and it's all laying on the ground. And then when they're all blown, the wind gets going, they all get up against the nets and they get into the drains and it becomes a big problem. So we're trying to, again, compromise, but knowing that in the world we live in, find the compromise. To council member mayor's point on the lights, we'll be working with that as well. Yes, sir. If they're ready, 10.7, 10-7. Need a definition of an adult. Of an what? It says, under the direct supervision of an adult. So is it not 12 years? It ten, it, yeah, it's section A, uh, section A there. It's direct supervision of an adult. You need to. And uh, then, uh, and this may be an attorney oh, okay. ad, I'm okay. not sure. The very last sentence talks about it shall be a violation for a person to permit. Uh, I don't know if that's redundant or not. because you've got requirements that says the dog shall display a current rabies tag and, and vaccination. Then, uh, Could you double that up, Patricia, again? Reinforce the point. 10-7B, last sentence. It shall be a violation for a person to allow or permit a dog to utilize or be located in the park if the animal does not meet the foregoing requirements. It should be then colon. Yeah, I, think then it look, I think it's redundant from the first sentence. Shall be shall be and shall display so okay, I'll work look on at that it on the, on the final draft well there's okay. a difference between that they can be there and you well, can throw them out or it's a violation right. well yeah can i ask you a question Larry? yes sir c dogs belonging to trophy club residents shall display a registration tag issued by the town what is that you know that is a program that adam put in place uh for trophy club residents and i, I you have to forgive me uh, council member mayor because i'm trying to remember i believe is it a, is it a oh, free service no no is it how much is it is it five dollars yeah it's a it's a five dollar fee the police chief yeah thank you we're talking about registering uh, pets here in town what are the pet requirements for registration Yeah. We keep that database at the police department. We want all of the, you know, and it's very hard to enforce as well. But uh, you got to be kidding. We no, register and a dog with the town. Yes, we do. And yours is registered too. And the only way you can get it registered is to show proof of proof of vaccination. That's a dumb law. <laughs> Very common law. Uh, dogs not registered. <laughs> 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 Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> How many dogs do you have registered in the town right now? What? I'll guarantee you there's not a person that lives in the Highlands knows that such a law even exists. I believe it's it, <laughs> I believe it is in the package, the info package that's handed that's not out. That's true. I promise you it's, it's not. not well, uh, no, I was I, I was commenting to his other. Oh. The, Your nobody dogs are registered, right? Yeah. <laughs> if, the, if the animal was picked up unregistered, we reminded them. You remind <laughs> me? We reminded them if they if it was picked up and it was not registered. That's never been <laughs> There's there's a couple of reasons for that actually. I mean, we want to make sure that they're vaccinated, current vaccinations, and it also gives us a database if we happen to pick it up. If he gets if your pet gets lost or whatever and gets turned into animal control <laughs> well <laughs> which okay, let's one stay on topic Danny welcome to council <laughs> that's just dumb <laughs> okay well, I'll just say you'll be um that's a rule we can tackle another time yeah, we'll. anybody have any other concerns I do about on G I don't so understand do I. that one same same question. Yeah. So I use treats I to train a dog. You All right, have so a training section, I, by the way. In the training area, correct. So the reason that is is when you introduce food or dog treats for one dog, it will make it, it can affect the behavior of the other dogs in the facility. So the recommendation from people who know a lot more about dogs than Adam and I do is that you don't bring jog or training treats into the general public except when you were doing a training class because other dogs have a nice sense of smell and they will come looking for a treat themselves and then you get a big dog fight. So that's why that's in place there. 
So, but you can't even do it when you're doing a class. Well, that might be that. an area where we might need to add well, a parks and recreation director discretion to make it, it what, 14? <laughs> do we need to make it 14 right there? No, it's there. It no, is? 14. Oh, there it is. Yes, authorized by the director. Special event. So we're good. Okay. We're still at 13. Who enforces uh, the um, dogs being registered when they're at the dog park? You know what? I mean, I'm who goes defer. out there and checks dogs? That's the I don't question. think anybody's doing it. The police department. Actively, but. Animal control. I can answer that. Yeah, Nobody, because my dogs right. are down there all the time. They're they not do. It isn't the, <laughs> the registered part is, it's the vax. There's two things. You have your registration, but there's a tag you get from the vet. Right. right. Says the dog a, of has course, we have that. I have that. I have that. Is what they're really looking for. So. I know, but you have to have it with you. Okay. Okay. Generally, it's animal control that's enforcing that. And. At the dog park I'm talking about. I don't think mine's registered either. Yes. Great. Keeps yeah. everybody safe. Awesome. Uh, any other thoughts or comments? You guys have all given me a great amount of feedback, which I appreciate. <laughs> I didn't have any less of an expectation. And uh, um, I'll work with Adam and staff and with uh, Patricia and uh, town manager Sly to clean all this up. And uh, we'll be back. Uh, it'll come back. My understanding is back to the parks board. Uh, I'm sure we can have some discussions with staff around the lighting uh, and work with other parties, interested parties, and then we'll come back before the Parks Board and then back to you again okay. uh, in the meantime. Um, I have, uh, there were people, I believe, has anybody signed up that wanted? There's some presentations. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm just telling, letting you guys know, you know. So there were people who wanted to speak on this. Yes. And since this is a workshop, we didn't, but they will during citizen presentation. We can't respond at that time because of the thing, but I wanted to make sure you were still here. Yes, I will be happy to stick around for citizen's presentation. It's be my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you all very much for your time tonight. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to take a break just for a couple of minutes, and then we'll get our meeting, our regular meeting started. <laughs> Thanks for stepping up, Larry. It is uh, 727 on, Febu on um, February 4th, and we will call the meeting into regular session. Um, the invocation will be offered by a uh, financial manager? Director, Director right. You have the, uh, Michael Aguilera. The pledges will be led by PIO marketing manager April Riling. If you'll please rise. Father in heaven, we uh, come before thee this evening. Uh, we ask that you please um, look over this meeting um, this evening. We're very thankful for all those who came out to participate in um, the uh, government of, of this community. We're very grateful to all the volunteers that help us on a week-to-week uh, -week basis, and we ask that you please bless them and their families for the time that they spend uh, to give back to their community very thankful for the elected body who give of their time. We ask that you please um, watch over their families <coughs> while they're away. And we also ask that you please watch over those who serve our community to keep it safe and to keep our country safe. We ask that you um, continue to bless the leaders in this community with guidance and with inspiration that um, opinions may be given with respect and that we would uh, remember the purpose of our being here. And we say these things in the name of thy son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On the next flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state, Oh, that's right. Okay. <laughs> Clint's not here to do the cheer. <laughs> I neglected to mention we had two other agenda, agenda items in the workshop, but we are um, skipping them. It's just a matter of um, 
time and not something we need to be dealing with right now. So um, we will move into citizen presentations and, and it's an opportunity to address the council <coughs> on any matter whether or not it's posted on the agenda. And as I explained before, the, um, the lights are not on our regular agenda or the baseball, the park ordinance, park ordinance. So we will certainly hear your comments, but we are limited into what we, to what we can say in response. I just wanted to explain that beforehand. Also, um, I would request, it's, it's up to you, everyone has their three minutes, but I would request if we have multiple people that if you can either, you know, agree with what the person said and go on to something different. In other words, let's make the best use of the time if we can so we're not repeating the same thing because we have a lot of other business to go through. So, um, but again, you're, you have your three minutes to say whatever you like. Okay, um, and I'm assuming all of the people who are in, uh, speaking on citizens is, are not addressing items that are on the, later on the agenda, right? Correct. Okay, all right, uh, Chuck Hall. And the, you do understand it's three minutes and the chief is timing that. So. Thank you, Thank Madam you. Mayor, Town Council. I appreciate the opportunity to come before you again. Uh, my name is Chuck Hall. I live at 19 Lakeview Drive and Trophy Club. I've been a resident here for 14 years. I'm currently serving as president of the uh, Trophy Club Rono uh, Baseball Association and uh, obviously lights. Um, and our facilities are very, very top of mind to me. I just want to make a couple of comments. I think the, uh, the dialogue that we've had tonight, the openness, the questions, the feedback, et cetera, I think are all pointing uh, in the right direction in terms of our ability to support um, league events, tournaments, and these types of things. And let me also say, and I mean this uh, from the bottom of my hearts, um, we want to be a conscientious and a very supportive Supportive neighbor uh, to our, <coughs> our friends um, and, and associated residents that adjoin um, that park. We're very sensitive to their uh, concerns and thoughts. Um, we want to work to a compromise uh, and hopefully kind of meet in between where we're not only able to serve our community and it's over 600 kids now, um, uh, hundreds of households, hundreds of households, uh, the majority of which are uh, from Trophy Club, uh, but we also want to be able to uh, recognize the concerns and thoughts of our friends and neighbors that adjoin that park. So ultimately, my goal is to uh, come away with something that is agreeable, understanding that flexibility um, is, is important. Um, flexibility with tournaments, especially. Um, let me just make one other last comment, uh, because I think this is important. Policing ourselves. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've driven the neighborhood because I got nothing better to do and I love baseball and I love our organization. Uh, and I've driven around and I've seen Indy 3 or Indy 4, or Indy 1 or Indy 2. Uh, when there's no one there, the lights are on. I call Musco, we shut it down. I do that for two reasons. And I'm not the only one. Uh, number one is to um, help alleviate light concerns from our neighbors. Uh, and number two is to save the town some money. That is our way of helping to contribute to the overall uh, product and support of, of what it is you, you all do for us. So thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Corey Woodard. Woodward. Good evening. Um, Chuck pretty much said it all. I'm on the baseball board as well. And I'm not going to reiterate what he said, but I do have three kids that play baseball. We live in North, uh, North Lake, so I'm not a resident, but I consider this my second home because I'm in trophy club with baseball all the time. My kids go to Medlin, uh, so this is my second home. Um, we do enjoy it, and we do respect the citizens that, that surround the park. And I know for a fact that man over there has been there uh, in the evenings driving around and turn off the lights. I have as well other board members. That's that's been one of our big mantras this uh, past season was see what we can do to help you know help the situation, be respectful to our neighbors, and you know save the the town some money with with electric costs. So we're doing definitely our part to to make this a, a concerted effort to um, ease the 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 issue and come to an agreement that that we can all 
uh, get along with and, and appreciate. So uh, it, it is a large uh, base with 600 kids, like, like Chuck said, and many families in the area that, uh, that support it. And, and Mayor, I know uh, you mentioned it as well, that, that you've been through it as well. So just want to take this opportunity to uh, say thank you for considering it and uh, hearing everybody out. Thank you. Rick Fernino, did I say that correctly? Fernino. Fernino. Thank you all for having us here. Appreciate your time uh, with this. I'm with the baseball group as well. I'm a board member now in the third year. Been playing in the league for seven years, I believe. Um, don't want to read it, what they've said a whole lot, besides the fact that flexibility is the key here. Um, we need to get these tournaments in for the, for the revenue fact of it. Uh, I will give you a little bit different perspective on it, though. I'm from northern Fort Worth. We're part of the NISD, so we play here. Um, we chose Trophy Club because of the facilities, because of the neighborhood, because of the people. We could have played in Keller. We could have played in Fossil Creek. We could have played in a lot of places. We chose Trophy Club because of your community. And that means a lot to us, and that's why we donate our time and our efforts towards it. But it's because of the facilities. It's because of the people of this community that we chose to play here. So we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And Mike Fitzgerald. Hi, Mike Fitzgerald, 24, 21 Lilyfield Drive, last time I checked. Um, it's been a while since I've been up here. Um, I, I'll spare most of the comments that I have with regard to the parks uh, ordinance uh, because it will take far in excess of everyone's three minutes. So I will choose instead to put my comments in writing and address them uh, directly to you. I do want to uh, take a moment to just say thank you to the town and to the Parks Board uh, for putting the time in and having this discussion rather than just throwing it up here and making a decision and moving on down the road. Uh, this works a lot better for me, I can tell you. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about was um, the a adding a, a council position. It, it, I don't know if that council position is to replace uh, a, a council person or is it, it's adding another council person. Um, whichever it is, I, I'd be curious to know if the town's considered districting for, for better representation. Uh, I'll just, I, I don't, I'm not asking for an answer. I just would like you to think about that. Okay. Um, and finally, the only other thing I want to say is that it's not necessarily about the lights with the time, because I can, I, I put up black up shade, blackout shades in my bedroom so I can block out the light. I put up screens on all my back windows so I can dim that light down, but I can't shut the noise off. That's a, that's, as long as the lights are on, there's, there's noise that goes with it. So. I would like you to consider that. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. Deb Durbin. Uh, I'm Deb Durbin. I live at 1042 Wilshire Drive, nowhere near the parks. <laughs> but I'm concerned because, um, you know, I've seen that there was an ordinance um, <clears throat> to. Um, you know, that, that it was supposed to be a 40-foot buffer, and that didn't happen. And um, I'm, that concerns me as a, a citizen uh, resident of Trophy Club because if that can be ignored, any other ordinance can be ignored. And um, I also believe that I, I'm uncomfortable with the uh, latitude or the proposed latitude of uh, allowing the parks director or parks manager to extend the games past 10 p.m. Uh, 10 p.m. is our current noise ordinance, I believe, and uh, extending it at the discretion of the parks manager or the parks director gives the residents that are adjacent to the ball fields no hope, really, because how do we know that it just won't happen? You know, I'm not saying it would, but it could. And I, I my personal opinion is that 10 p.m. is late enough for young children to be playing baseball. Um, 10 p.m. is plenty late enough, especially on a school night. So, thank you. Thank you. Ursula Roberts. Hi, my 
name is Ursula Roberts, and I live on 2419 Lily Field. So I am directly behind Indy East. And Trophy Club is my first home. We have three children that all are involved in lots of sports. During the week, we play all weekend. Um, I can tell you, being right behind the ball fields, that there's been a lot of discussion of sometimes this happens, every once in a while this happens. It happens a lot. This 10 p.m. ordinance is very rarely adhered to. That is our concern. So if that goes later, that extends it again. That is our concern. For most of the people that live on that street, we either have school-age children or we work, which means you're getting up at 6 o'clock in the morning. So what we're asking you is to at least give us our eight hours a night, eight hours, 10 to 6 in the morning. That's all we're asking for. We moved there knowing what we were getting. Some people didn't, but I did. But I'm asking for the council to give me my eight hours. I should be able to go to bed at 10, get up at six. There's a lot of nights I have to text Adam. There's a lot of nights we live with it. There's a lot of times I call Adam and we do not get responses back. So we've learned to live with it. So we're asking you to not extend that. And I know when you say nine tournaments a year, that seems really small. But a four-day tournament at 11 o'clock at night, that's a lot of my months, really. That's a, it's a lot of time when you take into consideration. I have a daughter who's eight is my youngest, and I'm asking you to give us our eight hours. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, Julie Folly. And uh, Julie, you had asked to um your husband has given you his time so you have six minutes if, chief. if i need it okay did you hear that chief okay <laughs> thank you my name is julie folly i live at 2407 lilyfield drive so i learned something new tonight um nine tournaments when i think of nine tournaments i think nine nights until i just learned tonight that if they can start on a thursday through sunday that's one tournament so that would be nine weekends that's a little concerning for me um, I just came out, I wanted to just not get emotional, I just wanted to go with facts. When we moved here um, for planning and zoning, chapter 13, page 977, the things that we looked at when we were going to buy a home, the lights were not going to exceed 25 feet. The light should be point directly towards the ground and be shielded. Alternative lights, however, could be approved by the town council, we did understand that. And the lighting shall be designed to reflect away from any adjacent residential areas. The problems that I have with that is that I have a light that shines directly at me. The light does not f go down. Now, I don't blame all of that on the council. Not sure if my mic's working. Um, what I, who I do blame that on are the engineers. I sat in this room that day, and I listened to the engineers say, the higher that we put the lights, if we go to 70 feet, they will point down. They will not come towards our property. However, I had Adam Adams finally come to my backyard just this past year, not very long ago as a matter of fact, and sit in my back patio. And he went ahead and he had all the lights put on. I think he was shocked. He sat there with the lights blinding in his eyes and acknowledged the fact that we have a problem, not so much the light meters, but the direction of the lights. So as he left my house, his first thought was, we'll see if we can get these tweaked. I will call you when they come out and they will tweak the lights. I never heard from him, but I just so happened to come home one night and found out from one of my neighbors that he was out there tweaking the lights ha with somebody. I mean, obviously the lighting. However, I never even got a call. So there was no way they could try to tweak the lights away from my home, so nothing has changed. I also want you to know that just last week, after asking for months of the security lights going on, that the security lights also point straight out to my light, my house. There's nothing that I can do about the security lights. Finally, Adam last week called me out of, and I wasn't even calling him, to let me know that he had met with the police department and that for security reasons, they felt that they could take those lights and they could tweak them down. They were going to be doing that this week. I have yet to see anything be done. So we live with that because it goes straight into our bedroom. So the other thing that I just want to bring up is when th you, they applied for a variance, 
okay? There were certain criteria that needed to be met for the variance for those 70 foot lights. And of course, again, the engineers, I mean, that's, that's what they sold you. They sold you a product. Well, the product now is there. That's their fault. Now I need this council to protect my home and my family. So that's your job is now that that is there to make it right, please. So some of the things that were there when those lights were went up, there were four criteria that needed to be met. I'm just going to read the most important one that I feel is the granting of the waiver will not be detrimental to the public health, safety, or welfare, or injurious to other properties in the area. That was part of that variance granted for these lights to go up. Honestly, I don't care if they play baseball, but I can tell you that it is very noisy back there, and the worst fields for me are the lights that are farthest away because all of those lights point straight at my home. So if the noise is there, I can almost live with that better than I can the lights, but my neighbors can't because their homes are closer. We all have a different di direct problem. Um, I have talked with Adam about maybe trying to incorporate some larger trees at the end of the parking lot, not on our buffer zone, at the end of the pool parking lot, because that is a direct line to some of those lights. I have yet to hear back from him. So we have tried to come up with solutions. Um, again, I know that it's been, uh, I'm going to repeat, the noise ordinance in our town is 10 p.m. It's really difficult to go ahead and keep lights on for baseball if at 10.30 and 11 we have to hear it, they can't. And I did bring that to Adam's attention, and he did just kind of balk that off. He didn't really say much about, he, he basically told us it wouldn't be an issue. But it is very much an issue. It is very noisy. And you know what? It's not really the kids' fault that it's noisy because they want to cheer for their teams. But I feel that if we give the rules to the baseball association that they have to have their last game with the amount of, of time to make sure that they have enough time, then the lights could be respectfully be off at 10 o'clock. I, I like baseball. I would actually, if I didn't have issues and so much stress, I'd probably walk over there and enjoy some of the games. And my children don't play. But right now, it is such a thorn in our side because we can't live comfortably. I have no use of my backyard. I want a pool in my backyard. I cannot have a pool in my backyard. That is very frustrating. So I would hope that knowing that I would say I have not heard one Royal Troon neighbor ever dislike baseball, I think we all just want to live next to the parks, and we are just all looking for a resolution so that we don't have the issues from the parks. Thank you. Thank you. Sue Fitzgerald. You don't get your husband's three minutes. You already told Hi. I'm Sue Fitzgerald, and I live at 2421 Lilyfield Road. And, um, you know, we, we've talked about the lights. We've talked about the meters. There's, there's a lot of issues here. Um, everyone in this room, and I know you know, we, we have a light problem in our house. I mean, you cannot say that with the um, the ball fields there, and we've tried to, to deal with it. We, we bought shades, we, we planted, um, you know, we, we, we really tried to work with it, but um, there's definitely a light issue. Um, we also have a uh, drainage issue. We did the wait and see. It hasn't rained much. <coughs> you know, I've informed. Bless Adam's heart. He's not here to defend himself. Um, I can't get him to either email, call, or text back. Um, so we, Mike and I have really talked about it. There's an easy solution that we think we can come up with that really doesn't cost a lot of money. So, we, re you know, it's official. We need to take care of our drainage problem. We also have a problem, Mayor White. You and I stood back there. We, we, we lose trees. We, we have a dead tree problem. And maybe because um, we have a dead creek problem, that's, that compounds our light problem because we have no buffer. So, you know, and Adam replaced two out of the three dead trees. We still have, for this will be, I think, our second season with this larger dead tree. I don't know. It was supposed to be under warranty, and then the bond something, you know, th it, it hasn't take been taken care of. Um, but bless his heart, the two dead trees that he replaced in the fall, they are now dead too. Um, so 
I don't know why this spot just continually, uh, if it's the irrigation has been turned off and it's not getting saturated, I, I don't know. You and I have stood back there and you have, and I cannot figure it out. So um, maybe if we can get the dead tree issue fixed, we wouldn't have such a problem with uh, the lights. So, um, and I do appreciate, you know, I'm with Ursula. I just want eight hours. I just want eight hours a piece. And unfortunately, Ursula, she gets up six, uh, up at 6. I get up at 5. Um, but 10 o'clock is, is a great time to say, you know what? The residents of Trophy Club lights out. Time, you know, the noise is gone. Um, let's good night. And I'm usually in bed before 10. So I do appreciate the opportunity of speaking. And I'm sure I will be communicating with you more. <laughs> OK, thank you. Um, Mike Buck. Uh, good evening. My name is Mike Buck, and uh, I'm also a resident of uh, Royal Troon. My address is 2401 Lilyfield Drive. I'm also the president of another committee within Trophy Club, so I've addressed the uh, town council a few times. And I'm also a coach, so I also coach a team who benefits from the parks and recreation in the fine city of Trophy Club as well, too. So I kind of understand both sides of, of every story here. I guess what I'm asking for and what uh, I want the town council to consider is uh, a word uh, actually two words that have been used quite frequently tonight and that is reasonable and flexible. I've heard a lot of people mention those two words and that's what I'd like for you to think about. I think that uh, the times that have been uh, proposed, um, I think that there's probably a lot of room for movement and negotiation there to make those more reasonable times. Even if you throttled those times back by a half an hour and what's currently proposed right now, I think you'd have a lot of uh, I think you'd have a good, reasonable compromise with the ci uh, citizens of Royal Troon and my neighbors as well, too. I actually am standing here more or less for cons uh, solidarity reasons with some of my other neighbors that live on Lilyfield. I'm more affected, quite frankly, by Indy West. So, and I also built my house and um, knew full well that those baseball fields were built when I actually purchased my home and built my home. So I knew it exactly what I was getting into. However, when I see that we're looking at you know, times and extending those times, that causes me great concern because as a few people have said before already, it's not necessarily the lights that bother me, quite frankly, it's the noise. And so when you have noise that comes in that goes along with those nights, the cheering alone, parents, children, whatever the case may be, is in some cases when I'm standing in my backyard, which is right behind the pool, you guys can come and visit at any time. You know, I would, uh, I would have people actually see what I see, it can be somewhat deafening, quite frankly, uh, during a tournament time. And if I do the math on my own here, if the tournament starts or the final game of the tournament starts on a Sunday evening at 8 o'clock, even two hours for the 14 U14s, you're looking at completing that game by 10 at the latest. And awards, ceremonies, handing out trophies, probably 1030. I'm okay with that. But when you start creeping up until 1130, I think that's when it becomes unreasonable. And so those are my comments. Um, my wife wanted me to mention one thing, and that's just that I think the town council also has to kind of look at the revenues. Does the revenues that these tournaments bring in and having additional times, the ratio of the revenues versus the expenses, does that, does that justify the means? So I think that's probably something that should be looked at as well, too, um, as we go forward. So thank you for your time. I appreciate it. And uh, those are my comments. Thank you. That's, is that all, no one else has had, that's all the speakers I have for that item. Thank you very much. And uh, as I said, we're, we're kind of limited in our response at this point, but we'll be talking about it. Okay, we'll move on to the consent agenda. All matters listed as consent agenda are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion. I move that we uh, adopt the uh, consent agenda as uh, as uh, submitted. As corrected. As, as, as corrected. That's right. At the dais. As corrected. At the dais. Second. You got it. You got it. Okay. The motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor? Okay. We're good. That was easy. <laughs> okay. Thing we've done I know she was waiting to see. For two hours. 
Yep. Yeah. Okay. Now moving on to the regular session. We have item number seven. Consider and take appropriate action regarding a replat of lot 2R block B to lot 2R1 and 2R2 block B of Trophywood Business Center. Applicant Highway 114 Prospect Limited, the property owner. Uh, and Carolyn, Director Huggins. Yes, ma'am, thank you. This is a replat of a lot in Trophywood Business Center, which is located across the street from Value Place Hotel. Let's see if I can get this. We're down here in the uh, lower right hand corner, southeast corner of the town. And um, this is the lot that has Trophy Branch Drive to the east, Trophy Wood Drive to the west, and Plaza Drive um, to the north. So the yellow, okay, I can get this real. The, the yellow um, lot there. Um, the lot is 3.2 acres, and the property owner is subdividing it into two lots. One will contain 1.2 acres of land, and the other will contain two acres. The purpose of the replat is that the owner wishes to sell the east lot, the 1.2 acre lot. The plat does meet the town's subdivision rules and regulations and the requirements of PD 25, and staff does recommend approval. The Planning and Zoning Commission recommended approval with a unanimous vote when they considered this item on January 17th. The applicant is represented by Davis, David Lewis with Spry Surveyors, and he is here this evening if you have any questions for him. Does anyone have any questions? Mayor, I'll move to approve uh, the replat of lot 2R block B to lot 2R-1 and 2R-2 block B Trophy Wood Business Center. Second. Okay, the motion's been made by Councilman Rose, seconded by Councilman Tiffany. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Okay, we're That's good. That's good. Yes. All right. Item number eight, consider and take appropriate action regarding a site plan for Lakeview Elementary School, 100 Village Trail, applicant RLK Engineering on behalf of Northwest ISD. Uh -oh. Director Huggins. Yes, ma'am, thank you. Northwest ISD is expanding Lakeview Elementary School. They are planning to add about 32,000 square feet, which will be new classrooms, in addition to the library and a new dining and kitchen area. Rob Morris, who's at the podium, he's with RLK Engineering, and Mike Elmore with SHW Group Architects have a presentation for you this evening that will go over the details of the expansion. The engineering construction plans have been reviewed and approved by the town engineer, including the drainage and detention pond that will be in the northeast corner of the property. And the reason you received a, such a large rolled <laughs> set of plans, <laughs> I'm sorry. And all the way to Austin. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Several, several sets went you know, to Austin. Typically, you would just look at a site plan package. But because um, the detention pond is a new feature of this site, we wanted to um, give you the data regarding the drainage. Um, so some of you wanted to look at that. Some of, for some of you, it was important. So we did include those details so that we, you would have those um, available. Uh, the town engineer has reviewed and approved the construction plans, and there is a memo from Mr. Rutledge signing off on the construction plans, page 45 of your packet. The site plan meets the town's regulations regarding building height, the location and screening of the dumpster, the photometrics plan, the landscape plan, which does provide the required tree mitigation as required by the town's regulations. The irrigation and parking are in compliance. Staff and the town engineer do recommend approval, and the Planning and Zoning, Com Zoning Commission heard this request on January 17th and by a unanimous vote recommended approval. Thank you. Okay. Uh, good evening. Um, like I said, my name is Rob Morse with RLK Engineering. Um, I'm going to give you an overview of what we're planning on doing with this project. Um, currently, this is uh, this is the site plan. I'm going to give you kind of back up here a little bit. This is currently how the uh, the school site is configured currently. Uh, we have a um, dr bus drop off along the front. Do you have a pointer? Yes, I'm sorry, I took it away from you. <laughs> There's a 
bus drop off along the long village trail. Uh, currently buses come in off of uh, this middle drive here, drop off in the front and let exit. There's a parent drop off uh, along the east side that kind of comes on the back side of the, for a turnaround. Parents exit back out. Um, right now, our current plan and what we're going to be doing is we're going to extend our front dro uh, drop off about 200 additional feet, line up with Sonora Drive. This will be for bus and visitor parking in the front. We're going to add additional parking along our east drive on this side. And we're, we're extending the parent drop off along the back. It'll be turn around, and then the new drop off will be in this location here. And with, we'll also be having a additional uh, fire loop drop off in the back to provide additional fire coverage along the back side of the school. What this allows us to do is it'll give us a lot more queuing to get traffic off of Village Trail. This will get us roughly kind of looping uh, traffic back. It might get around, depending on how they park or stack, around 50 cars off the Village Trail onto the school property. Um, also in the front there, this, you know, we have, I think we added 75 lots here, and we have 65 lots here for a total of 140 lots, which is quite an increase of what we have currently. On the back, this is our detention pond. Uh, kind of ran off the room here, so we have it shown here. This will detain uh, the additional impervious area runoff that we have with this uh, project to back to an existing condition, so we'll not be impacting the downstream channel and downstream pond um, that's to the northeast. And this is, again, more of more we're collecting now. I'm sorry, can you say what you just said again? Um, I'm just, I just need to understand how that works, the detention pond, and how it doesn't impact anything beyond it. Because now that you have a lot more pervious surface, how it doesn't impact anything. Um, Currently, what we did and we've done the plans is we figure out how much impervious area we currently have, and we, through calculation, we can figure out how much we're actually letting go in a flow rate during a given storm. In this case, we look back at the hundred-year storm and say we cannot increase the amount that's leaving the site currently with this amount of impervious area. And then we take the, our developed area, and we are collecting all the, the roof now and most of the parking areas and is draining to this detention pond. What we do at that point is we actually throttle back the amount that's actually leaving the pond with, uh, in this case we're using a weir. It actually restricts the flow actually leaving. So what that does, since more is coming in than leaving, it kind of creates a pond. And it, it balloons up and then you have to have more area to hold that water. And then as the waters recede in the channel and as it recedes out of there the, the pond will fill up and then it will slowly release that area at a lower rate. Okay, thank you. Um, one of the more important uh, kind of safety improvements we're having to this site is we're adding a fire loop, um, a water loop that goes around the site now. Currently there's a hydrant here and a hydrant here on the site. We're this loop allows us to add hydrants along um, our fire lane around the back to give us better fire coverage. But also, again, with our fire loop in the back, we'll be providing uh, additional coverage uh, to the back side of the site we currently do not have. Um, I'm here to entertain any other questions if uh, you'd like on the site, but I'd also like to turn it over to Terry Hoyle here. He's a resident of the architect to talk a little bit more about what we're doing internally to the, to the building. Good evening. Uh, let's go to the next one. Because that's not going to show quite so well, I'm going to try to do this back uh, on the plan before. Um, the, what we were trying to do with the design is to provide the kind of facilities on this campus that the district is trying to provide at all their campuses to upgrade each of their campuses around the district. And so, uh, looking at adding both capacity, adding an improved aesthetic on the outside, and then kind of modern amenities to the dining and the uh, uh, indoor uh, gym area. So just kind of showing you the area. This is the existing entrance here. <coughs> so what we've done is we've relocated and constructed a new library, which comes from the center of the building out to the front, so it's more uh, available to the public. 
and then continuing on with that public space where the uh, currently the dining area is here and the gym is here we are extending back with an addition that will put the dining uh, on the back that will allow for uh, the parents as they pick up and drop off to take advantage of that of, of the, the dining for that area and then converting the existing gymnasium uh, taking the existing gym converting it uh, to active space and then building new area out on the edge so we're expanding all of the public area in this location and then we're adding uh, classrooms both here and here for that added capacity uh, throughout the building. Madam Mayor, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> Terry, right? Yes, sir. Can you go back there? Uh, can you identify, uh, I, I was under the uh, impression that the gymnasium, the, the new gymnasium is going to be on the back side of that building. That, that is correct. Uh, as I was going through, <clears throat> the, existing, uh, the existing area the, is being, the existing dining is being changed to classrooms. The existing uh, gym is being converted to dining and then a new gym being added on and then the stage. And that's what's on the back side yes. is the new gym. Okay. Yes. That's what I and thought. Thank you. Okay, to give you a look uh, from the front at the, the, the entry aesthetic, currently it's more of an eclectic, more of a, I'd say more of a contemporary look that's out there now. Uh, we're looking at an aesthetic that blends more uh, to, the, to the town, a more of a traditional uh, expression. Uh, so we're continuing that uh, around if you are if you continue up the drive kind of looking back there's the new addition that continues to wrap in front of the old in trying to encapsulate the existing building with that more traditional expression and then as you go to the back uh, where the uh, parents uh, would drop off under this covered area uh, so you can see that the gym beyond to provide a nice uh, covered area there that again it has a nice traditional arch approach there. So that's a quick presentation. Any questions? I appreciate that. I, I couldn't quite get the, the look of it from these diagrams. Yes. Uh, that, that helps. Is that drop off under the covered inside those mm -hmm. columns or outside? There is a, so the, the curb is here. And then just immediately off of the curb is this covered walkway. It goes here and then back into the building. Oh, here. okay. So the cars aren't driving into a current covered area. Right, they're not covered. Okay. Well, I really love the architectural design. I mean, Good. I think it's going to add high value to that uh, neighborhood. Good. It looks yeah. really nice. Thank you. I just, and this may not fall in your arena at all, but I'm just curious, what is, uh, are they going to replace that garden or just wipe it out? The garden on the back? Uh-huh. Uh, currently, right now, it's, it's uh, doing away with it, and then that's something that will be uh, discussed over time, whether that is to be replaced or not. It is done by the uh, uh, PTA, uh, so because that's where the fire lane needed to go, yeah, we have an opportunity to start from scratch. It's just a lot. I know a lot went into that. Yes. And, uh, looks really nice. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Uh, very quickly, when do you plan on, I know we've already started some construction, when do you plan on uh, starting uh, the demolition that will be associated around in the landscaping and, and moving on to the building? Uh, Balfour Beatty uh, construction is uh, underway with uh, dirt work, setting the pad, doing some demolition to the site, uh, and then construction will uh, basically starting immediately and running through the end of uh, summer 23rd of this coming summer so a lot to do wow. uh, you'll start to see the building going up and then more de demolition happening and right. the objective is to be in the building by start of school absolutely okay <laughs> I, I, one other question let me, carolyn might be your answer um having just been in austin and uh had a, a presentation about the whole issue with the west nile uh, one of the big problems was detention ponds. Um, how do we anticipate this? I mean, is that you or that? Or who should I ask that question? You, you want to answer the I imagine some of the uh, discussion for about this now might be more related to a retention pond than a detention pond. Sometimes they're combined. 
in this case, a detention, in this case, it's a detention pond. So if there is no rain and it's been after a rain event for a significant period of time, there will be no water sitting I inside see. that pond. Um, basically, what you'll have a time period, you know, depending on your length of storm, you might have an hour of water, two, depending on if it, if it continues on. But fairly quickly after that rain event, this pond will drain. I see. You will not have water standing inside this pond. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All right. Does anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Madam Mayor, I'd like to uh, move to uh, accept the site plan for the Lakeview Elementary School 100 Village Trail applicant RLK Engineering on the behalf of Northwest ISD. Second. Okay, the motion's been made by Councilman Tiffany, seconded by Councilman Mayer. Uh, any other comments, questions? All those in favor? Okay, well, good. Thank, uh, thank you. Thank you for your time. Uh, I'd also like to add uh, thank you to staff for all the help that we've had on this project, but we really appreciate it. Very thank nice. you very much. I think extending that drop off Having been down at the school a number of times is a really good idea. Well, they're headed roundabout. <laughs> <laughs> Our second roundabout. Uh, Yay, roundabouts. Maybe we can put a fountain in that one. <laughs> I advertised a roundabout last week. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. I'm just um, trying to figure out what this, <laughs> my next comments here, just a minute. Preliminary and final plats. The next two agenda items, if we could combine them and, and talk about both the preliminary and final plats, and then go to the site plan. I think we can we can um, consider the preliminary and final plats first, and then and then move to the site plan. And um, and we have speakers who've requested to speak Did for item number eleven, the site plan. I, I think it's um, I think probably their concerns are to do with the site plan. And um, if we if we go ahead with the preliminary and final plat, then they can speak on on item number eleven, the site plan. Okay. All right. So we will then go into items nine and ten. Is what you're telling me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. To consider and take appropriate action regarding a preliminary plat of lot one, block A, the church at Trophy Lakes, eleven point six zero three acres, located at eight hundred Trophy Club Drive. Applicant Shane Harris, RGA, RGA Architects, on behalf of the Church at Trophy Lakes. And item 10 is to consider and take appropriate action regarding a final plat of lot. I thought you just said the preliminary plat. Preliminary plat would be item number oh, 9. Plan, I'm sorry. And final plat okay. would be number 10. The final plat of lot 1, block A, the Church, church at Trophy Lakes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, I, I would like to talk about these two together because in order for the preliminary plat to be approved, the drainage information must be received and approved. And, and typically that might be a year before you consider a final plat. So drainage information is, is considered, a preliminary plat is approved, and then we come back with a final plat. But in this case, we're doing both together. And the we've had several reviews to get the drainage to an acceptable point. The third review of the drainage was completed last week on Monday, January 28th. The applicant provided revised drainage info by email on Tuesday afternoon. Um, that's where we were at when the packet went out to you on, on the, the preliminary and final plat. The items on page 49 of your packet were still outstanding at that time. Staff has been working with, I should, I should say the town engineer has been working with the applicant and um, approval of the preliminary plat is subject to the drainage being approved. Mr. Rutledge spoke with the applicant's engineer today and there is a minor calculation that must be corrected and Tom if I'm putting any words <laughs> in your mouth please please correct me. Um, staff is asking that you approve the preliminary and final plats with the stipulation that that drainage calculation must be revised and approved by the town engineer. And they've indicated that they could um, probably take care of that tomorrow. 
Um, on January 17th, the Planning and Zoning Commission did recommend approval of the preliminary plat with the stipulation that the floodplain note be clarified, and that has been clarified on the current plat that you have, um, note number three on the preliminary plat and note number five on the final plat. Um, the Planning and Zoning Commission's other stipulation was that the outstanding review comments must be met. Those have all been met except for that one minor calculation, which we do anticipate being corrected within the next 48 hours. Okay. And the issue of any, any variance or anything, that comes in the site plan piece. Right. Okay. So the plan, okay. Um, I want to say thank you. I mean, I, drainage is such an issue here, and I really appreciate your conscientious and really being on it because that's just something that we, we've had so much problem with that um, thanks. Okay. Uh, and we didn't have any speakers for this part. Sorry, I'm getting this straight. <laughs> These are so always confusing. The preliminary plat is on, is up, and um, everything is okay except for this minor calculation that needs to be corrected. And then the final plat would be a duplicate of that. Um, and the drainage is at the, the top um, right corner, th and the, the private drainage easement is shown on both the preliminary and final plat. So we do recommend um, approval with the stipulation that that calculation, minor calculation for drainage be corrected. And one of the things that I was noticing when I was looking through the plan, a lot of the drainage is going into uh, over there, but there's a lot also going into the drains that go under the roundabout into the creek. Um, and we built it correctly to handle that, correct, right? We did. What we did when we designed the roundabout, we, we had aerial topography. We, we anticipated where things would most likely drain. Mm -hmm. uh, and so as we worked with the applicant's engineer on this, we did give them the roundabout plans and drainage studies that we prepared. So we made sure we had consistency with the two designs. And so whatever drainage would come from the church site to the roundabout, we have upsized and sized our system to anticipate that any of the, the increased runoff that will come from the church, either through this or any future improvements that they would have. Okay. What about when it gets to the creek? Now, um, all of that is being incorporated into the drainage study that Parisa Nichols is currently doing okay. for you guys. Mm -hmm. So that's all anticipated. So. Everything that they've done, they're looking at a much larger scale. Uh, they've, in, they've anticipated that okay. in their study. All right. Carolyn, how far out of WAC is the current, or the, has, does this have to change to be approved in this calculation? Very minor. <coughs> yeah, I, you know, the applicant's done a good job working with us. I mean, you just heard before on the school we had a detention pond. Well, these are the first two detention ponds that the town has ever had. And so this is kind of new. Um, and um, although, you know, they've been patient with us, so we've been, I guess you could say, very picky about it, we're trying to make sure we're following our ordinance to the T and documenting everything about the, the, the calculations so that anything ever happens in the future, downstream or anything and somebody wants to come back and check our math or check the engineer of records math we can be assured that they have followed the ordinance and so it doesn't change the design of the detention pond it's more of a of, of updating the calculation and, and providing some additional information so it's documented on the plans of record so we've we've looked at that with them we've talked to them and we're confident that uh, the plans as they're designed, they'll be okay. We just want more information on the plans so we have great documentation for anything in the future. And and I'm sorry if you already answered. I know I asked about mm -hmm. it going towards the roundabout to the creek, but if it goes, there's some of the drainage going to the north. That is correct. Now, is that going to cause a problem for the people in the quorum? No. Um, just like the previous applicant on the elementary described, what they did uh, what they did here is 
they took whatever the, whatever the drainage is going, that amount of drainage that's going there today, they take that number and then say, okay, here's how much additional would go there and it goes into the pond and the pond holds that so that it doesn't release any more than it's going there today. I always explain it like it's a bathtub. You go fill, you start filling your bathtub up and it starts filling up and you've got that drain. That drain in there, if water gets, more water goes in and that drain kind of is smaller so it meters that out. And so that's basically what you've got is just a giant bathtub there and it's just letting it out at a slower rate. Jacuzzi. Okay. And, th and the other thing, let me just say this, it hasn't, it hasn't come up, but I think it's one other element that's <coughs> important to go ahead and say as a matter of public record. We, we have put on the final, we had the applicant put on their final plat and on their site plan a private drainage easement. And we think that's important because we want them to own and maintain it so that town dollars are not having to go out there and do anything with that. Now we'll, if there's an issue, certainly we'll bring it to their attention, but it is, it is a drainage system to only support the church and so we want them to be responsible for mowing it, maintaining it, and making sure that it functions. And so you'll see on the plat a reference to a private drainage easement. It's a little bit unique for us, but that's something we think is very important in there, and so that'll always be there. The elementary school was not platting, but we had them put the same note on the site plan for the elementary school that that is a private facility to be owned and maintained by the school district so that the town isn't having to go out there and maintain that. Okay. But the town could have oversight on it, is oh, that correct? The town always has oversight of all anything that, th that is within the town to make sure it follows your ordinances. Just be like somebody okay. not Inspection. mowing, maintaining, Inspection. or, or th you bet. Yeah, okay. it always has, that. that's always in play. Okay. This may be for their engineer, but I notice it looks like we have two uh, pond grading plans, one for a phase one and one for a phase two. Are we coming back on phase two, tearing out phase one, or is that an that, expansion? Or That's at their discretion. That was the choice that the applicant, they can explain that to you when they come up here, but that was their okay. choice. And that was a little bit something that took a little longer because of the way they've decided to phase this, but we did look at and that's what's going to happen in phase one and two of the site plan is going to be considered tonight. So we had to look at the phase one and two to approve those and then make sure that the first phase functions well for whatever they're going to do in the first phase and then whenever second phase is built that we can be assured that it'll function as well. So they're redoing the pond at that point? They, if they do those, <coughs> if they phase that, they, they would come back in and do some additional work to the pond. But Looks that's like just how they, That's just how that they've decided to do that. Okay. Mr. Town Manager, is that the way we would normally do it? Or would you do a construction a job Once and then <laughs> come back the next time when you're ready to do something else? And it's a private facility. I so, I mean, they're, they're certainly uh, welcome to do that. You know, may not be the that's that's certainly their, their prerogative. It's their money. <laughs> I have okay. I have a question concerning the for the town staff phase one and phase two and maybe for the attorney. We approve both phases this evening. Is there a time frame or an expiration on phase two if it's not started within a certain time? That frame? was one of the things um, that I was going to bring up during the site plan consideration is because there is not a time frame. Um, they have not given us a time frame for phase one versus phase two. It could be, you know, they've indicated a couple of years before they start phase two. It, it could be a lot longer than that. Okay, let's consider the first, the, um, the plats. <coughs> preliminary and final. Okay, preliminary and final plats. It would be, um, you would be putting in a stipulation that the drainage calculation must be approved by the town engineer. And the way that would work is 
I would wait then for an okay from Tom in order to move forward. The preliminary plat just becomes a file in the town offices. The final plat must be filed with the county, and that final plat um, must be filed before a building permit can be issued. So, so that we will wait for the an okay from the town engineer. Once we've got that, they'll get the signatures on the final plat. They need to get that to me so we can file it before they would be able to move forward with their building plans if their site plan is approved this evening. Okay. I'll try it. Yeah. All right. I move to approve the preliminary and final plat of lot one block A, the church at Trophy Lakes, 11.603 acres, located at 800 Trophy Club Drive, with the requirement that the drainage calculations be corrected and approved by the town engineer and town staff okay. prior, prior to filing final plat. Yeah. Filing final plat, thank you. Okay. You have a second? A second. All right, the motion's been made by Councilman Rose, seconded by Councilman Tiffany. Uh, is there any other discussion? I just want to make sure that motion's Good, yeah. Clear. <laughs> it is sounded a little muddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Look who it's coming from. <laughs> no pun intended there. <laughs> the maker's open to any suggestions for improvement. I just want to make sure that the, the, the intent is Correctly. run through that run but like I said it's basically up to staff is like I said you know unless we have a final flat filed that's approved then they can't get a building permit so that stops the wheel basically what I understand the, the the motion to be is that you're going to approve the preliminary and final plat are you going to consider approving it subject to the drainage calculations being approved by the town engineer right. and getting the final plat filed before issuing any building permit is our normal rule anyway. That's right. Okay. All right. No further questions. <coughs> Anyone else? All those in favor? Okay. All right. Then we will move on to item number 11, which is to consider and take appropriate action regarding a site plan for the Church of Trophy Lakes, 800 Trophy Club Drive. Huggins? Director Huggins? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, this is um, for site plan consideration of the church at Trophy Lakes. There is a, let's see, this is the location. There is a 12,000 square foot building on the site, which is a church, daycare, and school. The site is zoned NS Neighborhood Services. The church plans to remodel and expand the existing building, adding 16,000 square feet to the building, including classrooms, bathrooms, a gymnasium, an expanded sanctuary and parking, which triggers a site plan requirement with plans submitted and reviewed by staff and ultimately a recommendation by the Planning and Zoning Commission and finally approval by council. This is a building that's been out there for 30 years, but because they decided to expand, this is why we had rezoning, platting, and now site plan approval. Um, this site plan was reviewed in accordance with the NS Neighborhood Services Development and Design Standard Regulations. There are nine items that do not meet the town's NS regulations. Those are briefly, out, those are outlined in your packet on pages 60 to 63, and I'll try and go over them briefly. <laughs> um, the first two items that do not meet the NS Zoning District regulations are the existing church building and the existing church steeple. Both items are shown here. Um, they're both are taller than the maximum allowed on the site, which would be 28 feet. The church is 37 feet 2 inches, and the steeple is 85 feet in height, approximately, and the church requests that they be allowed to keep the existing building and existing steeple. Then there are um, new items that are going to be added to the site, uh, which the church is requesting some uh, consideration from the town regulations. The uh, gymnasium, shown on the right side of the picture here, the new gymnasium 
will be 33 feet in height. The maximum allowed is 28, so they would need a variance to um, be allowed to have a gymnasium that tall. The north and west property lines, this is the west property line, um, is adjacent to residential and requires an eight-foot masonry wall. The um, property line to the west, this, this property line, is shared with seven residential property owners. The town contacted those homeowners and the HOA. Four homeowners responded, three in favor of not having a masonry wall, one in favor of having the wall. Um, staff would ask that if you do waive this requirement for a masonry wall that you do it um, only for this site plan. We ask that any site plan triggered in the future, any future expansion of the church site, bring this wall requirement back under consideration. This is just to safeguard the residents, the future residents along this property line because um, there is, I noted on page 62 of your packet that there is a town requirement that parking facilities within 60 feet of a residentially zoned district require an eight foot masonry wall. And if the church does expand with their long term master plan, there could be parking within the 60 feet. Um, on this picture, the, the residential to the west, to the left, um, there could be parking as close as 60 feet. And their existing wood fences, those uh, parking lights from those cars, the, the lights from those cars would come through those uh, wood slats. And so they might, at a future date, want to reconsider whether or not they, they would like a masonry wall and whether or not the town would require it. Carolyn, is that, is that the church's master plan that it, you have depicted there? Yes, sir, it is. This is from the church and, and one of their long-range um, plans. The north property line, and I don't believe I have a picture of that, the north property line is adjacent to residentially zoned, privately owned property. Um, the existing topography with a tall berm would indicate that a wall is not necessary. Um, however, st staff would ask that the applicant remove the comment on sheet SP1 that indicates this is park property. This this note is on the north, uh, on the, the uh, top of the SP1 site plan, and I, I, I believe it's a little bit misleading, that is not parkland to the north. It is privately owned, residentially zoned property. So we just feel that that note could be misconstrued, and we ask that the applicant remove it. Um, there is buffering required along the um, buffering required along the residentially zoned properties. And so both the west and north property lines require a 40-foot setback area adjacent to residential shall contain landscaping, fencing, berms, or trees to provide privacy to adjoining uses. And at this time, the applicant does not plan to put that in and ask for a waiver um, from, from that requirement. Um, EFIS does require an okay from the council. Uh, stone, stucco, or brick is allowed as a masonry product, but in our regulations, EFIS is considered a synthetic stucco, and so just to be clear, we ask that you do um, uh, let us know whether that's okay or not. Um, planter islands, there are some planter islands required every 12 parking spaces. With the existing parking, the applicant is not meeting that. However, they do have this 10 foot wide grassy area in between the parking spaces and they do plan to put trees down the center of this the this grassy island and we do believe staff does feel that that is a good trade-off um, rather than having to tear up the existing parking to add planter islands every 12 spaces the, the trees they plan to add to to these these ten foot wide area this ten foot wide area would would be a nice um, compromise. The parking spaces they do plan to have um, they, they're required by ordinance to have 179 parking spaces with their overall expansion of their church and school. They do not plan to, they cannot meet that at this time, and that's when phasing came in. We, we discussed with them the possibility of doing a phase one and phase two. Phase one would be the school only. Um, phase two would be the expansion of the sanctuary. 
and the overall requirement is 179 spaces with the school expansion they'll provide 102 which will just be the existing parking they're not going to add any additional spaces at this time eventually with phase two with the expansion of the church uh, the sanctuary then they would provide the 179 spaces the only concern that staff has with this is that if there is a school function we have we've we've seen that there has been one school function during the month of december where every parking space was taken and they were parking on the grass um, and if there are school functions we we anticipate that this may happen more frequently because this is a competition gym they've indicated this is a competition gym they'll have competitions and parking could potentially become a problem we've told them that they will have to police that themselves because it becomes a code enforcement issue then um, just like the pond just like the mosquitoes we code enforcement will be watching these things and, and parking will be one of the things that if they begin parking on the grass that's going to become a code enforcement issue and we will have to address it um, the applicant had indicated that they were talking to the Premier Academy about possibly sharing parking, but that is across the street, and I, I, we have found over and over again with code enforcement that people really don't want to park. Uh, they'll park wherever is closest, and if that's the grass, they're going to park, park on the grass. Um, and then also there there's an issue with the dumpster this is the existing dumpster and I believe uh, this has all been resolved the new dumpster will be in this location and the the only thing I'm confused about and I'm not sure we're, we're meeting the regulations here is they're planning to provide masonry on three sides as required by ordinance and a gate on the fourth side but also they're required to landscape it on the three masonry sides and uh, the applicant will have to address how they're going to do that. I believe they're going to do that with um, planter islands. Um, they're going to put some trees on either side, I guess a, a, a tree in that planter island, that island there, parking island, and then some trees to the left of it. They need to also provide something on the back side of the dumpster as far as, as landscape. <coughs> so they're in compliance with what they plan to do with the dumpster except for uh, landscaping possibly on one side um, the other outstanding items have been met there on page 63 of your packet there were five additional items fire lanes photometrics plan um, landscaping along a, a gym wall plant list that accurately um, lists all trees the wheel stops and curbs those have have all been addressed um, these are actually <laughs> wheel stops from the Tom Thumb Shopping Center, um, but the, the, the church, what the church is planning to do is not put in any wheel stops. They have curbs throughout their parking, and they have moved the, here's some of the curbs you can see, and you see how vehicles hang over into the, the landscaped areas. Well, they plan to have grass everywhere where cars can hang over. There was one section I don't think I have a good picture of it, but there was one section in the front parking area where they had put some Texas sage right there along the curb, and any car parking there would hit that and, and it would die. They've moved the Texas sage back, so I, I believe they've addressed that. The Planning and Zoning Commission did recommend approval of the site plan, but there were um, many variants of they they approved all of the waivers including the five that have now been met um, so those five items are not needed it's the the other nine that um, were listed in your staff report on pages 60 to 63 um, the the applicant is here with several people to give you a presentation and to answer your questions thank you um, then we'll listen to the presentation and then hear uh, any of our speakers so we get the presentation of, of what it is does that make sense to you Carolyn yes okay. ma'am my name is Rick Gilliland I live at 211 Phoenix Drive in Trophy Club I'm the owner of RGA Architects it's an office in Roanoke we're the architects for the church 
Well, I, I've asked uh, Pastor Barry Klingen to make a very brief statement to, to the council to kind of explain the, the genesis of where this project came from and, and, and the needs for it. And then I will give you a kind of a brief overview of, of what we've done uh, up to this point. And then I've got, we've got a presentation that'll go through um, in detail some of the, the, the items that Carolyn has described and, and, and try to give you a little more background as to where we are with that with that part of it. So with that, I'll turn it over to Pastor Bill. Thank you. Mayor White and the Town Council, uh, I'm Barry Klingen. I live at 122 Park Lane and Trophy Club, and yeah, I'm privileged to be the pastor of the church there at Trophy Lakes. And uh, just briefly say a few things to, uh, before our architects uh, explain all of these things tonight in detail. Um, first of all, if I could just take a moment, I get a rare opportunity to say thank you to all of you for, for serving. Our church as a community of faith takes very seriously our uh, scriptural responsibility uh, to pray for you and to honor you as the Bible teaches us. And we pray for you regularly at our church by name and for your family as well. And, and uh, I, I just want to be able to say that publicly. I also very much appreciate Mike and Stephen. They represent you and our town very well, and uh, we're very honored to have them. Uh, we meet uh, Church of Trophy Lakes there at 800 Trophy Club Drive in the facilities that were originally built by the First Baptist Church, uh, built before even the town of uh, Trophy Club was incorporated. And uh, when I came several years ago, uh, it was a time for some change, and so we had a complete restart of the church and a new name. That's why we changed the name and had a new beginning. And uh, during that time, as our ministries are growing, the church is growing, we knew that we would want to expand and, and uh, renovate and bring our facilities up to date. There's nobody more happy to see these pictures than I am of, of finally getting some uh, uh, parking and and uh, landscaping and facilities that uh, are uh, in line with what should be in Trophy Club. Uh, also to expand that, our, our ministries, um, you know, the ministries to our community, especially um, our preschool ministry and our after-school ministries and summer program with youth and children uh, have grown very rapidly. We currently have a waiting list for 2014 uh, for, for our preschool program. And uh, we, so we you know, need these facilities, as happens many times with churches and other projects. The uh, financing and the project, even though we've worked on it for years, comes together very quickly. And uh, when it did, we um, put the pressure on uh, Rick, our architects, to, to get us through this, to guide us through this. And uh, I apologize for any um, stress that's put on uh, our city with uh, moving a little quickly when we had to do the zoning and all of this it, it took a little longer uh, our time and we're trying to get it uh, in place to have ready for the for the fall uh, of this year and uh, so we apologize that but also say thank you thank you for working with us to help us uh, expeditiously get this project moving that uh, need, needed to be done years ago uh, so thank you for that we we as we began to plan on this we uh, partnered with RGA uh, architects, a local firm, Rick, a member of, Tro uh, lives in Trophy Club, knows this community, and so he could guide us through this, and uh, we've, uh, and they've done a very good job of uh, leading us through this. Uh, I just want to give you a little history on that, say thank you, appreciate you and what you do, and, and uh, let them come and uh, bring the specifics uh, to us at this time. Thank you. Okay. Um, first off, um, Pastor Barry is, is very correct in saying that we, we've been working on this project, and, and he would probably laugh at me for, for many years. And um, when, when we finally kind of constituted the, the scope of the project we wanted to go forward, they started chasing financing. And, and obviously, we, we, uh, we stole all the review time and construction time getting the money squared away and the I guess the their, the inability to, to know for sure how much money they were going to be able to borrow constituted the reason that we had to phase the project into two pieces 
Um, and the phase one is, is, is um, generated to accomplish and do everything that, that needs to happen for phase one. And depending on when their final loan comes through and all that kind of thing, if there's money to do phase two, we may do it all at the same time. We may do it, uh, it may be separated by a matter of months. Um, Carolyn mentioned that you know it could be years. Right now, the, the tone of the church and, and the, the mood of the church is they want to get it all done. Um, we just have not got final pricing in yet for the final construction. We don't know whether we can get it all done. Um, th there's a couple of things that are, that are, that are kind of driving that, that need. But in, in a general sense, I think Carolyn pretty much showed the, the master plan that she showed you is admittedly kind of a pie in the sky kind of thing. We don't have any idea whether that's really going to happen in that kind of configuration. But it in general displays where the church is intending to take their development all in a consolidated campus centered around a future sanctuary and, and classroom and support facilities around that. Um, the, um, the site is the site. Uh, in general, the, the new facility, the expansion facility, has the existing church with some, the, the flat work and, I mean, the sidewalks and the parking and stuff in front of the main sanctuary is, it's heaved and broken and, and it's more than unsightly, it's almost dangerous, if not definitely dangerous. So as part of phase one, we are going around in the front and we're actually doing some of the site work that's ultimately more driven by phase two, which is a sanctuary expansion and kind of a new entrance to the church facility. But as part of phase two, I mean phase one, it is, it is purely just that little bit of site work around the front and then the addition of the classrooms and the gymnasium. And uh, to address one thing, that, another thing that Carolyn talked about, the gym is sized to allow for, you know, UIL caliber competition. The, the height requirement that, that we're asking for the variance for is driven purely by the fact that they want to be able to hold a competition event in there someday without having to rebuild it. When you're talking about a... A, an mm -hmm. academy school program that has, you know, I think up through third grade maybe planned in the immediate term, they won't have the classroom space to go beyond that. We're not talking about a competition gym for a while. Um, that would come really as much as part of the later expansions of the facility. But they didn't want to have to rebuild the gym, kind of like they got to do it at, uh, what was it, Beck and Medlin uh, a few years ago when they built them all too short. So what we're trying to do is build it smart the first time, and to do that, we just need a little more height uh, than, the, than the straight zoning uh, offers. I'd also like to add that because we got pushed to the point to actually start this process because of the church <coughs> financing and all that kind of stuff, we kind of were robbed of the opportunity from a timing standpoint to go for a PD, which is really what we should have and would have liked to have done. What we did is we took the course that seemed to be the most expedient in order to get them the facility they need within the time frame they needed, which is ready for school this coming fall. Um, the NS zoning allowed all the uses, in addition to a whole bunch of other uses that they don't need or want, but it allows everything that they want to do to happen in that zoning classification, but it's got a few gotchas in it. And, and those gotchas are the things that we're coming to you for some help with. Um, you know, the church is intent on, 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 a, on a major upgrade of their facility. They, they want the facility to look first class and, and, and trophy club caliber. And, and uh, as a resident, I appreciate that. But, but in addition to that, I mean, it's the church's philosophy. They want to be a good neighbor, good citizen of the town. Um, but they're church and they don't have unlimited funds. And, so they're, you know, they're trying to do it in a manner that, that makes sense. In, in a, uh, uh, the, well, the, these are the discussion items that we'll be going through. What I wanted to do is point out a couple of items just in an overall site planning standpoint. The existing church facility, when, when we talk about the expansion and the, the screening requirements and the 
um, all that kind of thing. We're talking about a facility that is more than a city block east of that line of residential homes. And it's almost set back a block from Village Trail. So it's not like we're crowding up against the residential right now. Even in that master plan scheme that, that Carolyn showed you, the, the farthest west parking that we had all over closest to the residential neighborhood was actually 70 feet away from it. So we had no parking inside that 60 foot zone that required the, the, the screen wall for the parking. So we're, we're cognizant of what those rules are and, and we want to do that. But as you might guess, it would be very expensive for them to have to run irrigation lines a city block away and run an irrigation system to feed some landscaping that is a block away from their facility at this time. And, and the, the idea is that we would like to defer that cost until we're actually developing uh, over closer to that, that part of the site. Um, with that, I mean, I, I think I'd like to, um, Shane Harris has kind of run this, this uh, with my office, has run this, this slideshow through planning and zoning. I think he's probably got a, a good grasp and would, would like to kind of walk through the slides and, and talk to you a little bit about uh, the responses that we've, that we've done to the town comments. And um, we just appreciate your consideration and, and really appreciate the town's help. I mean, it's, it's been stressful and it's been tough um, but it's been driven by the fact that we're kind of in this time box that, that we've got to get going and, and I know that they've jumped through hoops and uh, town, town manager and, and, and Carol have been fantastic just, I mean, not that we haven't butted head a few times, but it's been, it's been uh, even, even when we're struggling, they, they helped us keep this ball rolling and, and it was, a lot of times it, was, it required some above and beyond effort, so we really appreciate that effort. Good evening, I'm Shane Harris from RGA Architects. Carolyn kind of uh, went through each of the items. We have a, a short presentation that kind of expands on some of the items we're, we're asking for a variance on. I'm, mine, <laughs> ours aren't in the same order that Carolyn's were, so I'm gonna kind of flip around. The um, as she stated, the, the neighborhood services zoning ultimately requ requires 179 parking spaces for the phase one and phase two complete build out. That's driven by the size of the sanctuary. Um, most of those additional spaces are needed because of the sanctuary essentially doubling in size from what it is now. Um, since phase one is primarily elementary school and a gym, they, we, we're in agreement that phasing the parking requirement made sense. Um, I think Rick got through these, but that shows the existing 116 spaces. So you're actually removing 14 spaces. I think that's to that I have a concern with that, but go ahead. To correct some of the um, some of the site work that Rick mentioned near the front of the building, like I said, all of the existing site work up here is in is in really bad shape. So we're trying to correct some of that and then provide the required accessible parking places that will ultimately be required for the larger parking lot. Um, so we, we lose some spaces for the accessibility spot and some spaces for the loading zone. And then the, the other reason is right outside of the porting share, we, we didn't quite have the width requirement for a 24 foot wide fire lane. Mm -hmm. So it, it forced us to restripe a few places here just to just so we maintain that 24 foot fire lane. Other than that, all we're trying, we tried to leave as many of the parking places as we could, which kind of lends toward the other item of not having one island per 12 parking places. And then with the phase two, just the sanctuary expansion up here, we then provide the additional parking and it kind of, it kind of marries up with the master plan that Carolyn showed. It, there's been a little bit of changes just here and there, but it pretty much marries up with it, keeping that distance from the west property line. Uh, do, should I ask a question now or? 
I still have an, I have an issue with this parking in the fact that you have you indicated that there's been a problem already with the parking and we're going to reduce it. There was only, from the time this was submitted in early November, we started watching the parking and there was only one day where all of the parking spaces were taken and there was overflow and they were parking in the grass. Um, and that was around Christmas time when there was some sort of program going on at the school. So we have not noticed a problem at Sunday services. We haven't noticed a problem day to day with the school. It's only been when there's a function at the school. And if they do have a competition gym, that could become an issue. But we have not, we have not found it a, a problem on a day to day basis and not on Sunday. But you're increasing the capacity of the forget the gym for a moment you're increasing the capacity of the school so if you have any program at any time during the year at the school now you have a problem that is possible yes yes ma'am however they can um, uh, take care of that by shuttling people somewhere well, they had indicated that they were trying to come to some sort of an agreement with um, Premier Commons. Academy to share oh, their parking across the street. Want but people to be crossing through that roundabout? That would be helpful. Um, Sorry. Well, that, that was <laughs> explain to that me was not very nice. why are we putting off the parking? Is it just financial? Yeah, that's Is it simply a financial reason? Mm -hmm. That that's part of it, but the other part is just to. It, it, 99% of the time, the parking isn't an issue. Yeah. Currently, I mean, they, they've been doing set, uh, parking counts for us since, since we started the project. And, um, you know, every Sunday they're at 50%, 60% capacity. So they, they – Okay, the but if you never build phase two, we're going to approve if you're – what capacity is the sanctuary now, 40 or 50%? So if you get more members at the church, we're going to, and then we vote to increase uh, the size of the school <coughs> and add a gymnasium and reduce the number of parking spaces that you currently have, and then the town's growing, so you get a whole lot more members of the church, and then you're at 80 or 90% capacity, where are those people going to park? Oh. Just checking my numbers. The um, the church is not 50% capacity. They've already gone to two services because they were so full that that they had to. Where the the parking counts that we're talking about are at the crossover peak usage periods between services. So when we say that they're using 65 spaces out of the hundred and some odd that they have now. Um, that is at their peak demand usage on a Sunday morning um, for the purposes of that. Uh, so, I mean, don't get me wrong, the, the, the parking lot right now is oversized for the size of sanctuary they have. Okay, it always has been. The, and and the, the driving reason that they have to expand the parking lot is because of the the size of the sanctuary not in other words the if, if we took the sanctuary out of the equation and started talking about the parking requirements for classrooms and that kind of thing like like what Med or Lakeview had to satisfy and that kind of thing the 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 number of cars required for for schools um, we would be we wouldn't have to add a car at all uh, probably for two or more expansions of the school. It, it's the parking count for schools is, is very low. But for the purposes of what we're doing, what we're, the, the reason we phased the project was because that parking expansion represents a quarter of a million dollars that they don't have. So, and it so, is, so it's a financial well, reason. Uh, but the reason they're not doing the, the expansion of the sanctuary is because to do the sanctuary expansion, they have to spend another two hundred fifty thousand dollars to build a parking lot. So, rather than expand the sanctuary and the parking lot, which they can't afford to do, they took the sanctuary expansion off the table, so that they could keep the parking lot the size that it is, 
and just do the school expansion. Okay, so so we're not we're not we're not trying to expand the sanctuary, but not the parking and just do the parking later. The the thing that's driving the additional parking is the expanded sanctuary, and we're not doing the expanded sanctuary because they at this point they can't combine the they can't afford the two of them. File, I don't think you should file a phase. I think you should file them individually, and you need to meet. I, I think you need to meet the requirements of what you have on each phase. And if phase one well, is I mean, that's, that's separately in, than phase in, two. In essence, that's what we're doing. I mean, no, the phase no, one sir, satisfies the requirements for phase one. Because you're asking us to approve the entire thing but only build a part of it. You, and you won't, otherwise you wouldn't be asking for variances. Well, we're, we're what we're, th this is not so much a variance as it is, what we want you to do is, is consider that for, for the first part of the construction, the existing parking is adequate. And, but, but they don't want to have to come back through the whole site plan approval process to be able to add the sanctuary and the parking because they hope that that's going to happen soon. But it may never happen. It may not, but it may happen at the same time. And so rather, rather, than, rather, than, rather than do it as two separate complete projects, which would separate them perhaps unnecessarily, what we want you to do is look at it from the standpoint of phase one expansion requires no additional parking. We want to get approval to do that part. And if we have to stop there, we'll stop there. But while we're here, can we get you to approve a sanctuary expansion and the associated parking that goes along with that so that if that, if that money becomes available in, in a month, in six months, we can go ahead and do it without having to backtrack through the whole process again. Okay, go ahead. Uh, the next item was the planter requirements. The zoning ordinance says that you're required to have one uh, planter island for 12 spaces. The expansion parking that is associated with phase two meets that requirement. Um, and as Carolyn said, the existing parking does not, um, you know, we, we kind of looked at it a different way. If we, if we didn't credit the internal island, um, we felt that the, the new part, the new landscape island at the front say was, you know, added just as much landscaping as if we cut out four more parking places. So I, I think the thing Carolyn mentioned before, you're going to be putting trees down that island? Yes, down the center of this island here. And in the existing islands. Yeah, and on all the existing parking islands. But yeah, we were just, if we, if we did provide the one for 12, it would eliminate these spaces. We don't need to eliminate more spaces. Uh, yeah. <laughs> For the maximum building height, um, as Carolyn mentioned earlier, the existing building has two two places: the existing, the, the top of the building here, and the top of the steeple. Both exceed the 28 feet. And then for the new construction, the uh, the gym height is 33 feet. That's derived from the competition gym. Is that you have to have 25 feet clear. So once you get to 25 feet plus the structure of the building, it Mayor. just takes you up that high. Madam Mayor, mm -hmm. Shane, um, I understand the phasing issue. This particular uh, diagram shows a completely new steeple. It, that, that's just how we had it rendered a long time ago. That, that, that's not an intent. Are you intending to replace the steeple that's there? No. no. Okay. <laughs> no, it's just <laughs> it's a drafting Good. issue. That's it was good. different. That's yeah, good. It is. Very observant. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I have a question, if, uh, Carolyn. Um, the, the, this particular example, or is it the height, Not I'm not talking about the steeple, but I'm talking about the gym, because that's a new building. The steeple is already there. 
Does that not, when someone looks for variants, does that not require contacting the uh, people in the area? And have we done that? No, we have not done that. A site plan does not require it. And we, we talked about this a little bit earlier today, um, the, the town attorney and I. Typically, a variance um, that goes to the Zoning Board of Adjustment would require property owner notification. Yes, ma'am. Um, but what we've done in Trophy Club uh, traditionally is with site plan approval, we've allowed the Planning and Zoning Commission to recommend waivers and the town council to approve that in association with a site plan and that does not require property owner notification that, and also that on this picture makes sense to me uh, well i mean that's just what we've done in the past you've uh, you've approved variances on the site plan itself as opposed to sending these nine variances to the zba i know but I guess it would be my thought that if we're going to make something different from what our zoning is, that the people around it have, you know, that we would normally ask people if you're going to change or build something. No, our regulations do not require that. However, with the wall, we did feel it was important yeah, and we that. did contact those property owners and the HOA because it so directly affected them. Can I ask you a question about the gym? Uh, there's a couple of gymnasiums that I have visited that are in the Metroplex that due to height restrictions, they're step-down gyms. They're excavated and built lower so that they don't exceed the height restrictions of, of the community. Mm -hmm. Is Did y'all not consider excavating and lowering it? I mean, to be honest, no, we didn't. The the cost the issues with the cost of I mean, in in our soil conditions, um, with the clays and the and the way the the water works in it, it is it is very very difficult to to create a, a essentially a retaining wall that's part of your building, and and make that wall one waterproof so that you don't get moisture coming through the wall but even if you if you do that the mold issues and all that kind of stuff that come along with with having building space below grade i mean it's the reason we don't see basements in you know in any kind of volume in dallas and all that kind of stuff just going down into the ground with with a with a building surface creates a lot of issues that are technically very difficult to solve in an absolute sense and and also very expensive to solve but but the, I mean we never we didn't consider it simply because um, the um, just the technical issues themselves were 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 somewhat ominous I mean it was it's very difficult to do um, I might add that when we, when we first started this we thought we were working within a 40 foot um, height limit and and kind of at the 11th hour we we found out we were we were <laughs> kind of crushed down a little bit, so it it kind of put us into a pickle as far as the height re restrictions. So we're we're asking for some uh, for some help. And again, uh, with the with the point being that you know this is over a block away from the residential um, lot lines to the west. What about to the south? Uh, it's it's I mean, if, if a city block is typically 300 by 300. We're like 250 feet from from Village Trail, and over 300 to the lot lines to the west. Tom Kim on one side and this on the other side. What on the wall? It's got the 33 foot dimension on it. What lighting is on that wall? There, the the lighting on the west facade is all ground mounted lighting, just lighting back up at the building. Okay. That's light. Yeah. Well, I, I say that. Um, at Some this location, there's a wall of mounted light that's it's 100% shielded. It just shines light up against the wall, up and down. There are no lights on top of the building shining down? No. Okay. They have a photometric chart in there? Yeah, looked at it. Okay, go ahead. But I had the photometric. 
geometric chart from the baseball <laughs> this this just showed more of the details of the existing building how it the existing roofs at 37 and the steeples at 85 And there's there's the dimensions you were asking about. The next one is the eight foot masonry requirement. Um, I guess it would be our stance. We'd, we'd like to defer any requirement to build the wall on the west or the north property line to any future phases that we get closer to the west or north property lines. Would you, uh, can I ask a question on that? When you say any future phases, are you talking something beyond phase two? Or are you saying in phase two you will take care of the wall? On the Be beyond phase two. Okay. Yeah, because phase two isn't going to take them any closer to the property. Parking lot goes out there. Parking lot will be lit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so I have to ask again, why do you not want to put an eight-foot wall along the masonry wall along where the homes are? On the one side the other side I, I agree I think it's pretty with the berm I think that's a great view but why do you not want to put one where the homes are the reason I ask is we're dealing with a fence situation we've been dealing with a fence situation that happened a long time ago and it won't go away <laughs> so uh, I'm asking again I happen to have visited some of those folks over there today and talked to them and uh, so I'm I'm wondering. Uh, two of the people told me, Carolyn, they didn't they didn't realize that building was requested to be so high. Uh, they just had only addressed the fence issue. Uh, but uh, I'm wondering why why do you not want to build that masonry fence? We felt that it was so far away that it wasn't. It was only a barrier up up against the residences that most of the ones we spoke with didn't even care for and you know, the, obviously the north we had the same opinion no one really wants to break up the, the grass oh, I think the, the other side doesn't need anything I think it's pretty <laughs> it's primarily the distance away we, we didn't want to that would be to up build to it eight. now until we got you know the plan is to do something a berm or landscaping as we get closer to that property line can you go back to the um, the dis the chart you had with the I think this one shows maybe show what you're asking yeah do you okay. have 340 feet from the back of the new gym that's correct now when the new parking lot goes in mm -hmm. how far is it from the parking lot to that from the parking lot it's where we're at now it's about 80 feet from the where we turn around where the turnaround on the parking no lot is. phase two parking the phase two parking when phase fa when phase two parking goes in how f how far does it extend toward the it it gets to within 80 feet of the west property line 80. Eight? Eight, 80 80 80, 80. 80. Uh -huh. closer than 90 <coughs> yeah the part the that parking lot in phase two mm -hmm. gets within 80 feet of the correct and what you show there from the building to that wall is roughly one football field length. Correct. They really have a lot of property. I don't know that if there's still a comment in the list, but there was some, there was a comment in our original report regarding the facade along Village Trail um, that it was that there was a large expanse that it was it was not there wasn't enough you know change. ornamentation or change in elevation and I guess it, one of the comments was that we could we could address it similar to how Tom Thumb incorporated the wall design and I guess our when we came back to it we were I guess the, the plan shows it a little better the Tom Thumb rear facade was 50 to 80 feet away from the street, and we're 242 to 400 feet away from the street. Um, there were, it's 
three times as long as the elevation we were dealing with, and uh, and we had just as many ins and outs, just just not not the exact design techniques that they used on the tom thumb. Shane, isn't there a playground now in front of one wall and the other wall you added landscaping at the request of PNZ? Yes, as part of the PNZ um, meeting, we added adi some additional landscaping right here. And then just for protection, the, the new playground will be just out in front of this entrance. It kind of gets protected by more sides that direction, keeps the kids away from the parking lot. Mm. So if we go back to that, we, we took two renderings of the new building, one from right here and one from right here. So that would be the, the shot of the building looking straight on from Village Trail. And then that's the back end. You can just see, barely see the back end of the gym from the corner. Both of which, I mean, the landscaping will be all in front of this. And then the new building, or the existing building, shields most of the new building from Trophy Club Drive. You wouldn't even see it. So, And then the last item we didn't have in this presentation, but it was regarded the use of EAPS. <coughs> I don't I, I would hope that the slide was still there. I can go back to one of these previous renderings and show you. For the new building, we're proposing to use EFs. Most of it is above roof or above the entries except for on the west wall where there's a 30 inch brick ledge and then eaves above that. We're primarily using it because of the insulation value we get out of it. We want, the, we want to build the walls out of cinder blocks, con concrete masonry units, because from the inside the impact resistance is better in a gym. And then on the outside to be able to pass the energy code, we need a solid layer of insulation that stucco doesn't provide us. So it gets us the same look as stucco and then gives us the insulation that we want as well. We kept it lower on the west side primarily because in the future that's the direction we want to expand. And then, the, you know, it's a lighter material. The west sun doesn't heat up the gym as much. That's I think that addresses each of the items. Okay, thank you. Um, I think I'll let the people who wanted to speak now. Um, I had uh, Rebecca Smith. I, I just wanna make it clear that there are not going to be any 25 foot tall trees planted on this site. <laughs> They're all three inch caliper trees that are going to be planted with the landscape plan, not <coughs> what's what's noted on some oh. of these renderings. That that tree will not be there. Yeah. It won't be that tree. <laughs> but yeah, until a long time from now. We learned about how trees take a while. <laughs> or die. Yeah, or die. Yeah. My name's Rebecca Smith. I uh live at 110 Lakeshore Drive, and my property backs up to, th to the church. And uh, I moved to Trophy Club back in 2002, and one of the reasons we chose that house was because of the unobstru unobstructed view. So what I just wanted to be on record that I definitely do not want a fence as a barrier there. So I respectfully request that you waive that requirement. Is your home the one with the uh, metal fence? <coughs> no. <coughs> That's <yours>. okay. <laughs> I'm their neighbor. It's right next to them. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Paula Jandra. That's my backyard. Yeah. yeah. 
crews will look around the other side of that tire shaft. Okay. Madam Mayor, Council Members, my name is Paula Jondro. I live at 112 Lakeshore Drive next door to Becky Smith. And I also do not want a masonry wall along our backyard, closing in most of my backyard. Uh, we all moved, all of the residents on that side of Lakeshore Drive moved there knowing the church was there, that we would be looking on the church, that there was a possibility that the church would expand this was a decision that we made. We didn't have any problem with it. This is basically a quality of life issue for us. Our backyard not only has a slope, as you can see, because we had to put a retaining wall in, but it's also the smallest backyard on the, on the block. So a masonry wall, number one, is not gonna block a view. It might, I doubt that it will block much sound either, and it will make us feel like we're living in a prison. Anyway, um, a masonry wall would actually come within 19 feet of the brick on the back of my house, just for your information. Um, obviously, when we get into phase three expansion, we would be in favor of doing, uh, you know, a, a large, well, I think it's a 20 foot requirement for landscaping. We would certainly be in favor of that. Um, as far as just a matter of clarification, the land to the north is private property. It is common area for the HOA, not a park. Um, all my neighbors that I've spoken with about the wall on the north side, all of them had the same reaction. Oh my God, we don't want that. So. Um, and uh, I just would like to ask you one question, um, especially since your fence is open. Um, when they do phase two, not three, but two, with the parking lot extended, you're still okay with that? Yes. They basically are. like some buffering with tree. Or well, she's in phase three. But, but I don't think, until phase three, I think we'll be fine. Okay. Yeah. Truly. Okay. So we, the church has always been a great neighbor. And we certainly have no problem with any of the variances that they've asked for. And I appreciate your time and your consideration. Thank you. Can I add one thing about that parking extension? Mm -hmm. um, just, I mean, we could go back to the slide if you wanted to, but the, the only part that even gets as close as that to the, to the residences is actually the turnaround. The actual parking spaces themselves all point south and north. So it's not like cars are going to be sitting facing with their, with with their, their headlights. headlights facing them for an extended, I mean, maybe a brief period. And obviously that's only when it's dark. And I mean, it's not really part of the consideration that we're asking for. But I mean, obviously, when we get to those future phases, one, we're leaving like a 70 foot wide buffer between our parking and the, and the residences. But we would certainly be berming and landscaping that area at that time. And so, you know, our, our intent would be to be good neighbors and to shield those lights from the neighbors. But I think there's ways to do it without necessarily building a wall that, that many of them don't want in the first place. Okay, thank you. Alan Jondro? I'll abstain. I think she made her point very well. <laughs> okay. Uh, with um, that, Shannon, those was all the speakers we had on 11? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Want to take a break? Okay, we're going to take a break for just a few minutes. A few minutes you just <laughs> <laughs> back into session, and um, I think what one of the things we're going to do is take a look at these exceptions individually. Not, you know, we're not uh, going to just go to the plan. <coughs> but we're going to look at each one and decide on that individually. Did I understand that correctly with the council? Mm -hmm. uh, can I just make one comment? Certainly. Uh, to the architect, on your plans that you submitted, uh, on your building features, you make a note on here that 100% masonry exterior if is approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission. I would like to point out that the Planning and Zoning Commission can't approve anything. <laughs> They're a recommending body. 
Car Carolyn pointed that out to us. The ordinance actually reads um, uh, where it says that. It, it actually reads specifically to be approved by planning and zoning in, the, in, in, the, in that language. So we added that note after we got planning and zoning approval, thinking that that was the appropriate thing to do. We, we've really got no issue with, I okay, mean, I, we, I, just, I just want to point that we, out. We think, we think IFAS is the appropriate material regardless, but, but that was just a, uh, w just a response because to what. If were that the case, you wouldn't be asking for it tonight, would you? Well, we <laughs> didn't think we were going to be until we saw the agenda for tonight. So it was, it, I mean, quite literally, the, the ordinance actually states approved by P and Z, so we thought it was done. Okay, thank you. Mayor, I do have one question, which would it doesn't affect any of these waivers that we're going to be looking at. I would like to know when the portable classroom is going to be removed. Part of the uh, on on the documents that is in there, it, it was stipulated that the portable classroom is removed uh, when they take occupancy of the building of the classroom building. So the phase one building is essentially being built okay. to replace that portable okay. classroom. I missed that note. Okay. Yeah, it, that note was on there. When they had the certificate of occupancy, I think it says. Uh, I, I, another general question. On, uh, on the very last page under water notes, number 17 and 18, it says the valve may only be operated by city personnel. Do we operate water valves? Uh, or is that a mud? mud? The mud, the mud oh. employees do that. Okay, I, 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 pr I appreciate that, but unfortunately, we're not a typical town. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I think it's, it's in the... the town trophy club ordinance. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're a happy town. <laughs> okay. Did the mud review this? So, if we're going to take these waivers one at a time, I'm going to start on page 60. And that would be the existing non-conforming structures. Uh, the church building height, but the building and the steeple. Mayor, let me do. Let me do this. I move to approve the waiver for the church building height as an item one on the, on page sixty. I'll second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Okay. We're good there. And that includes, did that include the steeple? No. No, okay, go That's for it. That's next page. <laughs> All right. Let me write down approved here so I can keep track of for the final. The mayor, I move to approve waiver for steeple height. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay. Now we move on to the new construction. And the first item is the gymnasium height. We'll get it into discussion. I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to, Mayor, I move to approve the waiver for the gymnasium height. Second. Now we're in okay. discussion. Now the discussion. In your filing, it says that the uh, gym needs to be 25 feet tall clearance, but you're asking for 33 feet. What's, what's the extra eight if feet for? Right. Roof structure. There's, the, the structure is nearly five and a half feet thick. I mean, to span, to clear span the 65 feet of the gym, it, you, you get about five of that eaten up in structure. The slope to, to get water off the roof eats up about another foot and a half. And then we've got a parapet to screen any penetrations or whatnot that would be on the roof. So it's the parapet height that's the 33 feet. It's it's like a foot and a half at the high end, and it slope like I said it slopes down a foot and a half or so downhill to the short end, and then you got five and a half feet of structure. It it we've we've screwed it down as low as we can go. I just I'm a simple man. <laughs> no, no, that's it. <laughs> you know, oh, when you mentioned that the parapet, does that um uh, how does that work? I remember getting into this a lot with screening AC. 80, 30 <laughs> about screening air conditioning and that type of thing. There's no air conditioning equipment on top of the gym. Okay. Okay. 
The, all of that is on the roof of the lower structure adjacent to it, and the parapets are high enough to completely screen that equipment. Okay. So, I mean, the parapets are taller than the equipment, so there's, you'd have to be above it to see, look down on it. Okay. Good. Thank you. I just you. want to understand. All right. Um, any other comments or questions? I personally have a little bit of a heartburn over the notification here, but okay. All those in favor of the waiver for the gymnasium height? I'm only bending because of the distance, but uh, that. I'd like us to look at that particular um, thing in general. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, the next thing is item four, the masonry wall on the west and north sides of the property. We'll get it into discussion. I move to approve the masonry wall eight foot on the west and north sides of the property, the waiver for the masonry waiver. wall. Waiver, okay. I was Move to say. approve the waiver for the masonry wall, eight foot, on the west and north sides of the property. I'll second. Okay. Um, I would move to amend that motion, Mayor. Okay. I would move to uh, approve the waiver for phase one only. I think we re need to revisit this at phase two, give the homeowners a chance after it's built during phase one to see it and see the building and see what they want to do. But I'd like to revisit again in phase two. Okay, that's amendment. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. All right. Well, we're at the discussion point for anybody that, unless there's any other amendment. I personally um, agree with this waiver. I I would like to figure out how, and may, maybe this phase two covers it, but if we didn't have that phase two, then we at least need to make it conditional. This is not a, gen, a waiver waiver. This is only for now, right? Only for this project. Well, the motion is to, for phase one only. It, only. it only holds for phase one. Once right. They, They'll have to come, it'll have to be cleared prior to phase two then, correct? So that doesn't make it, it's the, we talked about making it a conditional, like that phase one piece would cover that. Is that correct? I just want to make sure we, we've done what we they need. They can't do anything beyond phase one without If we do with that, okay. Is that correct, Carolyn? You're looking well, a little. You, you want to revisit it with phase two, which are you saying then that you're, planning to only approve their site plan for phase one this evening that they have to come back just the masonry we're, we're talking the about the masonry fence only right now okay but if they wanted if the, if and when they get around to phase two before they can do they're going to have to get a variance on that masonry fence again the way the waiver would only apply to phase one I would really lean okay I'd this I would lean towards making that a conditional waiver only for this project but I don't know that I'd, I'd break it between phase one and two the only reason mayor once they build that big tall building back there and the and the neighborhood gets a chance to look at it we're going to do what the neighbors want so if they get they think after it's built and it's as tall like the two people I talked to today then if they decide they'd like to have a fence put up we can we can put the fence up in phase two or we can give them a waiver in phase two but once we approve it, you can't do anything if they decide they don't like it. Mayor, if, <clears throat> if they choose to develop anything else, they got phase one and phase two, if they choose to do any other development on that property, it would require another site plan, and, and that masonry wall requirement would still be there. You'd have to address it every time they do a site plan. I, I want to be assured of that, that if we if we approved it for this 
plan. That's right. That that waiver would not go beyond this project. If they have, if they come back Correct. with additional, if they come back with additional <coughs> development improvements on that property that require a site plan, they'd have to, we, you'd have to review that issue all over again. The masonry wall is tied to this site plan, and for you may waive it for this site plan or call it for phase one. However, you want to make that notation. It's clear that it is tied to this site plan. I just want to make sure that that waiver didn't kind of go along with the property. Nope, it goes with the site plan. Okay. So any other future improvements would require another site plan, and you'd have to address that issue at that point. Okay. Now the second part of my question, <coughs> then, is if we approve the amendment and say it's only for phase one, is that can you do that? I mean, without them having to redo. Well, it, it, I mean, it, it's phased. They've chosen to to put it forward in phases, so each phase stands alone. Okay. All right. Is there any other discussion? I guess I, I need to kind of get clear here. I mean, I'm. We we seem to be going through a lot of hoops here. I don't understand why we just don't. They don't amend their site plan to say here this is phase one and then they come in with an amended site plan for phase two because the process for amending the site plan is not near the, the process that you go through for the first phase and it can be done and addressed quickly and then you don't, you're not going well is it there is it not there and it's run here's phase one this is what phase one concludes and we're done isn't that simpler and if not tell me where i'm wrong I think that's a good suggestion. Um, they, we, we went to phasing because they couldn't meet the parking requirements. And um, that was the solution we could come up with to, to allow them to not have the required 179 spaces. Um, I don't know what their timing is for phase two. I, if it were soon, then I can see why they would not want to come back to, to do another site plan with, with phase two. But I, I in, in the three months we've been working with the applicants, I haven't gotten a good feeling for when phase two might happen. The, the current feeling is that it is imminent. Um, uh, their loan package looks to be much better than, than um, than not um, so I mean the idea is that they need the expanded sanctuary to help support the school and, and vice versa so the idea is that it go go forward and I, I, I might add that it you know obviously it's not that we can't meet the parking requirement it's just we weren't sure whether we could afford to meet the parking requirement of the expanded sanctuary so we broke it in two phases in order to give the church the flexibility to when the prices come in if it if it, if this is a doable deal in one in one phase that's what we would prefer to do um, because there's the economy of mobilization and everything else with the construction so the idea would be that I mean our, our, our preference would be to um, maintain a site plan approval for a, a two-phase project that um, allowed them to do that project as soon as the funds became available to do it. And if that, if that happens to be concurrent to phase one, then so be it. But it, it could be so quickly afterwards that, that having to come back through this process again, because I'm not sure exactly how you would do an amendment to the site plan to add phase two without having to go through the whole sequence again. You would have to go through the whole sequence. I mean, again. basically, it, it would throw if 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 the dollars come in right. Basically, they would lose every advantage of being able to do the project concurrently because they can't start it until we come back through site plan approval. Um, I think is there, you, is there is there a fixed time on the prop? You're only really held up by P and Z on their timings and meetings and monthly meetings. Um, the so they could call a special meeting. 
No, sir, it's not that. It's, it's for instance, when they first submitted their project, we started um, going back and forth with review plans. Um, they submitted their plans. We reviewed them. We gave them comments. And typically, this goes back and forth two or three times. In this particular project, after the first set of review plans went out, um, the applicant chose to go a little bit different route and meet individually with staff members or um, the Planning and Zoning Commission, which delayed delayed us in moving forward. I would suggest if we have to do this again that they try and stick a little bit more to the procedures. But if you're going to approve this site plan this evening for Phase 1 and Phase 2, I, I would suggest that you make sure that the applicant understands that the entire phase must be constructed. All of phase one must be done. All of phase two must be done. It can't be piecemeal. They can't pick and choose what they're going to do. This is a site plan you're approving, and it all needs to go together. And uh, from what they've told us, going back to when they submitted in November, I, I believe they're hoping that the school expansion is going to help fund some of the church expansion, too. We know from other schools that that doesn't always happen. Um, and that's why I don't have a lot of confidence that this might happen soon. Um, th they, they know, they certainly know their finances um, and, and whether or not they're forthcoming, I hope, I hope they are. But I just think we need to make sure that what we approve tonight, that the applicant clearly understands they have to construct it all. It, it can't be piecemeal. They can't do phase one and then come back and say, oh, we need a few more parking spaces, so now we're going to build part of the parking and, and eventually maybe expand the sanctuary. It, it's, this is a site plan you're approving. They need to do this project. Otherwise, it has to come back for a new site plan, and that does mean meeting all of the requirements of the NS zoning district regulations, which means landscaping, height, masonry product, all of that, again. <coughs> I certainly understand the, you know, the challenges of, of, of the church, you know, like I said, and, and it's certainly not my attempt to burden the church with the process. It's just, this seems to be a, an awkward way of getting there without having a process if if staff's comfortable with phase one phase two and this is and this is the site plan and if the and if anything changes basically then that that's a new process and site and site plan changes staff is comfortable with phase one and phase two as long as phase one is built and, and if they go move forward with phase two they do the entire phase two we're not comfortable with piecemealing phase two so that they expand the parking lot and not the sanctuary, as an example. Because well, a site plan like would what say I heard, otherwise. Though, is that we got three phases? Mm -mm. Is it? Well, we need the we need the new part. We need the expanded parking lot only when we uh, expand the sanctuary facility. So when that happens, th those two kind of come s side by side. We do have some concerns with losing parking places when we're, when we're already possibly in a crowded position. Right. What I'm hearing is that, okay, this is a competition gym, but uh, it's not going to be competition until you get to at least sixth through eighth grade, which you don't have in this building phase, if I understand right because you're only adding like what six classrooms yeah but if you're so. thinking of a uil level competition gym i think you have more in mind for it than this school well i'm looking at the plan there is no room i mean you come in there is no room for any in, well you got 10 feet looking looking from your right. design plan you got a court and you've got a very small side area and that's it it's not going to be a typical what I call game gym that you go l look at, at, let's say Northwest ISD and something like Correct. that. Correct. I mean, we the the whole point of building the gym, the size, the height that we're doing it, is and 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 it it kind of dovetails into the parking requirements for a gym like that. We're building the gym so that it could be used <coughs> competitively 
in an environment where they have to comply with those UIL type requirements, those needs are not going to be there for some time. But we wanted to avoid the lake, the the Beck and, and Mellon trap of building a, a facility that's not big enough, and then having to build a new one when they do get to that point. They need it. They need a gym facility for the younger kid ages to do their activities and the, and to do that kind of stuff. But the, you know, for for an elementary school scenario, they don't need a gym that's that tall. It's just in the interim, it doesn't make sense to build one now and then have to build another one later. We're just building the right height this time, and and because just because it's big enough to be a competition gym doesn't mean that we necessarily are going to be scheduling tournaments of high school kids and and having that happen. Um, you know, I mean, it's just that that's not that's not the ministry of the church. I mean, it's 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 not the intent that the gym is to serve the church. Need to bring back to amendment. Yeah, let's bring okay. There. Well, that's what we're working on. Oh no, no, I'm sorry, we're not. I apologize. Okay. okay. Um, Call the question on the amendment. All right. So we have the vote for phase the amendment, which is to make that. Yeah, and this is a vote on the question that he called for. Oh, thanks, Glenn. Okay. I called the question on the amendment. I know. So I'm we have it. to now vote on calling the question. <laughs> yes. Being so, it's in okay. other words, you're going to move forward on yes. no. the amendment. Question. All right. All in favor of calling the question? We did. Okay. Now. All in favor of the amendment, which is to make this waiver on the masonry wall applicable to phase one and requiring them to come back now to, um, for phase two. And this, all right. That's the question. Yeah. All those in favor of that amendment? I don't. I, I, I think you you messed it up, because I, I need to understand. I did what I heard was staff was clear they would go phase one and phase two. That's correct. And now what I'm hearing on this amendment is that we're not doing phase one. We're, we're and two. We're doing phase one, and then they're going to come back to that's council yeah, for phase two. Uh, and that's that, not that, what staff said. Staff said they're comfortable with phase, phase as long one. as they do phase one all at one time and, and phase two all at one time. Correct. Am I correct, Mike? Right, but the require the the thing, and I'm sorry, we got a little confused here. The requirement to come back for one. the waiver approval again in phase two, just for that masonry wall. Is that going to make them go have to go through the whole process again? Well, so for every and, and I may have to call on the town attorney to help me here. If I if I'm understanding correctly, you're saying that when they get to the point where they want to start building phase two, we have to bring this back before council only to consider the wall whether or not the wall needs to be addressed at that time. Yeah. That's that that is the motion that is on the table. The and that is it, okay if that if it yes, works because what what you're doing is approving phase one waiving the masonry requirement for phase one only yes okay now I want to say my question oh if, if, if your goal and I understand it about seeing the height right what if they get their financing and are going to do phase one and two right on top of each other at the same time well, if they do it at the same time, and they're, it, it's, it, that's a phase one project, but they're going to have to come back to do the phase two portion of it. All they got to do is go up here and file and come before the council okay. and say we're going to do the I whole thing. I just wanted to understand. Okay. Yeah, in which case the people are not going to get a chance to look at it. That's true. Okay. We need to start the vote over. I think so. <laughs> is everybody clear? On vote, We're voting on the amendment. Of requiring the of approving phase the waiver for the masonry wall for phase one only oh. for phase two they would have to come to the council to only. address the masonry wall to address the masonry, address the masonry wall. wall only yes you got it okay all those in favor of the amendment okay I need to approve the motion Yes. So now we would approve the um, the motion as amended. As amended. Thank you. All those in favor? 
Okay. That was hard. <laughs> Come back in hard. <laughs> okay. You were on a roll. You were on a roll. Oh, I have to keep yeah. going? Keep yeah, going. Mayor. Number five. Mayor, can I ask a general question? Uh-huh. Does the count, does any of my fellow council members have any issues with the rest of the items? Yes. <laughs> is there one specific? Well, my goal is to see if we can approve everything, but or something like that. Well, if we don't have any issue, that. we can go through it. We can do it quickly. You want to do a consent agenda? Mm -hmm. Yes. I want to talk about the landscaping. I what want to number, uh, five? number five. Okay. Well, I want I want to uh, talk about buffering. That's landscaping. That's landscaping. That's okay, five. that's the next one. So let's go okay. for it. I, I move to approve. I move to approve the waiver for buffering. Second. Okay. Discussion. Okay, I have a discussion. I want to. I want to point out that we're talking about one of the key intersections in our town, built next to one of the largest capital improvement projects the town's done in many years. And as you drive down Trophy Lake, you can see down that side. And as you drive down Trophy Club, you can see down by the berm. And you can see all of that area back there. And I, I want to recall and bring the council back to when we went through this same process of approving the LDS church. And I recall the point was made that that was on a very major intersection and we made them jump through hoops. I remember even they have a little me outdoor meeting area, as I recall, with some posts. We were even talking to, with them about what color the posts were going to be, how they were going to be finished. Uh, we made them put a sidewalk in. Uh, we counted plants. Uh, they went way beyond. They probably put in enough plants to qualify for both churches, but it's on their site. Uh, they gave us land. Uh, I, I'm very uncomfortable in the fact I understand that the architect says they don't want to run irrigation way out there to nowhere, but we wouldn't do this for any developer. We wouldn't do this for anybody that comes in here building something in this town. And I, I think you set a dangerous precedent when we start waiving landscaping how much money did we spend landscaping all of those new islands uh, I, I believe that that landscaping needs to be put in it needs to be put in during phase one uh, and I, I, I just don't see any reason to waive that whatsoever can I ask a clarifying question mm -hmm. this buffer area is really to the south and to the what I call the west to the north and the west the, north. the west really is the buffer is the well where the residential area and where it ties into the HOA mm -hmm. yes sir correct not yes. not any of the open space the between the, trophy, the trophy club drive and um, village trail no. there is landscaping required along trophy club drive that they have met All right so I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with. You had some pictures. I, part I'm struggling with is that the view that you're looking at, I mean, you're looking at creating a buffer between the residential area and the, and, and between there and the, uh, the HOA and, and, and the pond area. I mean, the area I'd be more concerned where it would be the area in the corner, in the corner of the church in, in front care, of that. I don't care about the pond area and the berm. I'm talking about on that area back behind those, in between the church building and those homes. Back on there. the west side it, only. But, you know, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, Mayor, Council Mayor, <laughs> uh, when we talk about the um, LDS church, there were hundreds of trees down there, and they were getting ready to be pulled out. Currently, right now, there are no trees. So we're very accustomed, frankly, of looking at the, the property the way it is. And even the berm on the north, we're, we're accustomed to that. So to 
ask them to put a lot of trees in there right now, I think is probably more than we should be asking. Why would that be? That's our ordinance. Well, th their, their ordinance is to replace trees and to keep the trees that are there, correct? No, ma'am. That's not our ordinance. Uh, that, that's one so, ordinance, but there's another ordinance in that buffer zone that it's to be landscaped. Which, you mean the one on the north side? The one by the homes, wh wh whatever direction that's north or south. Well, and, and, but right now it's not. But they're, they're filing for a new filing, and they now come under that. Before, they didn't come under that. Because, okay. because You're right. the difference, okay. Jeanette, is because right. when they built the church originally, we weren't even a town yet. So we didn't have any ordinances. Okay. So that's why that's why we had to give the variance on the height. The okay. the area that you just approved to vary the masonry wall. Mm -hmm. They no longer have to do that masonry wall unless they come back for phase two and reapply, right? That's the area that we're talking about. The folks that came and talked oh, to you oh, talking about behind the their homes, oh, that I'm forty sorry. foot buffer. I, oh, I just sorry. want to make sure everybody cle that. is clear about what we're talking about. I'm, I'm, I'm on. A, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very are. clear on the area that we're talking about. All right, I just had so my compass. Really but not around. everybody is. So my challenge is, is that yeah. normally a buffing area is designed so you don't build anything between there and the construction. You got two hundred and three hundred and forty feet right now between there in the next construction item based on phase one here so there's nothing there except dirt and you know and only when the parking lot gets expanded in phase two do you become within 80 feet and then i would probably say once that's done looking at the current landscape plan there's very little done anywhere between the end of the parking lot and the residential area and i would think that would probably need to be addressed there. That's that's the closest that that, that you come. I would agree. Um, and and back to the north, I guess, is you have the HOA area and the pond, right? and then the pond, and you have and you have and you have that view. Now, if I'm confused, that's so are you suggesting no, that, that I, we give this waiver saying. for phase one only and when they want to bring the parking lot down there we revisit it in phase two like we do the wall that's that sound like it'd be an awesome plan councilman mayor <laughs> madam mayor i move to amend the motion that's currently before us i move that we uh approve uh, the buffering for phase one only and uh, the variance for phase one only and uh, if and when they ever want to move to phase two they come back to the council for a, a continuing variance uh, on the uh, buffering second now i have a question mm -hmm. because and we've had the discussion but we talk about setback area adjacent to residential is this buffering area unlike the fence in that it's only on the west side it's not on the north side it is on the north side as well it is required on the north but side it's not well. next to I, well, well i understand but we don't have to address that right now we can address, that, address it phase two. two good um yeah i i guess we're all a little bit uh a little bit sensitive about this 40-foot buffer area landscape buffer really? <laughs> because we've had a lot of issue and, and and i have to agree with one thing that, that uh, mr mayor pointed out is that you know with the other church they they built a sidewalk and a park area and donated that property to the city and uh, a whole lot of things and we've just paid a lot of money for property from you so um you know, as i look at, as i look at this issue just issue in general I don't see a requirement I mean it would be nice to do landscaping over there along the lake area where it, where it abuts the lake That's that would that would be nice but in my mind the real landscaping issue is going to develop down along the back of those residences and so as I look at doing this I mean in my mind it takes a long time for a tree to grow and I would be looking 
if I owned that property at planting those trees last week. Actually, it'd be a lot cheaper than having to make them look larger later on. Yeah. <laughs> but that's just that's just it, my personal opinion. It does tend to, I think the, the whole, one thing, I, I'm a mixed opinion on it, but one thing that when putting all that additional building with the gym and the school and everything, you're bringing a lot more focus to the whole property. And it's going to be then a lot more noticeable that that looks terrible and totally barren. So that, to me, I think that, you know, things that people don't notice when you're not, you know, having all of this there, it just creates a different environment. <coughs> address something? We're talking about a condition that, like you've said, has been there a long time, and we're talking about a fairly small expansion to a, f to a, to a facility. I have to timber. I'm a, I'm, I'm a resident here, and I, and, I, and I feel a little obligated. This council, in a matter of just a couple of moments, passed a 33,000 square foot expansion of Lakeview Elementary with with driveways and all kinds of stuff that get much closer to residential space. I mean, a, a much more massive site that that does not have even a fraction of the landscaping that we are putting in on this project on their entire facility now. It, it, it seems like we're, we're beating up a relatively small project for not living up to something that is that is a direct result of of the fact that i mean we can go through a lot of things but i mean the the, the zoning ordinance requires they were I not mean, excuse uh, understand, me. But that, they were not asking for any waivers i, I understand that and, and i'm not sure i really understand why because i think the ordinance requires any any place that re, that i know you can't have a kindergarten in an r residential zoning the way I was reading it. I, I'm sorry, that, Mr. That, Gilliland, that's, that's not correct. The, I mean, the, the way schools, I understood, but, uh, but I mean, all, all, all that notwastanding. I mean, but you've uh, said my a couple of things that, that are not true, sir. Okay, then, then the, the way I read it, but uh, I'll take that back, okay? Yeah, because, Let's just I say mean, that they're, not, the, the, they're perfectly fine. But I am saying that you're talking about a much smaller facility that is much farther away from any residential property and you know, I mean, we're, we're debating whether or not it's a good idea to, to landscape. And we, we are asking for a waiver to not have to put in, you know, 700 linear feet of buffer landscaping against seven residences that currently don't have that, that landscaping in place, all because a block away we're building a 16,000 square foot building that's five feet taller than the, than the ordinance allows. And, and, I, and I just feel like there's, there, there's a level of scrutiny here that, that I, don't, I don't really necessarily think is warranted. And I'm, I'm not saying that because I've designed the facility or anything like that. I mean, I'm, I'm just talking practically as, a, as, as both a person and as a resident. I, I, don't, I don't understand, um, I, I mean, I understand what you're trying to do and the, and, the, and the obligation you have to protect the residences and all that kind of thing. But I mean, we're we're talking about a, a relatively. I mean, we've we at at PNZ's request, we came in and added a whole line of trees along the west side. I mean, the whole west side of the building is is fairly heavily landscaped now. We've got like 10, 20 trees along that stretch um, uh, near the building the, that that would mitigate the view issue. I mean, I, I'm not sure I understand what planting some trees within a 40-foot strip behind a solid wood fence really gains you in the short term when ultimately all that stuff will be addressed in the next round of site plans when they actually build something closer enough over there for it to, to matter. Well, I and will I, say I understand your concern. However, I don't appreciate your the sense that, you know, we're, we're – looking into one more than the other. They did not come to us with a variance that we had to discuss. It is our obligation to our citizens to evaluate any variance that is brought to us. And believe me, P&Z is not the one who is going to be accountable 
for whether that variance goes through. I'm we sorry, are. What, what we have to, to answer to our citizens. This church was built before we were a town. Therefore, they were not subject to the rules and the requirements of the zoning of this town. Now we have to look and see how it fits best because you opened the door with putting out a plan. Now we have to look at the whole thing. So I don't appreciate somebody saying to us that we're putting more scrutiny on you than someone else. I, I'm, it is a different situation that has been through many iterations of the zoning, of applying to the zoning, and they did not ask for any variance, so therefore we did not need to discuss it. I understand. Okay. Where were we? <laughs> well, we had On the buffer. We, we, we had a motion buffering. discussing uh, phase one only waiver for buffering. Okay. Is there any other discussion on that motion? Ame amendment. amendment. All those in favor? Of the amendment? Yes, of the amendment. Okay. Opposed? Okay. Now we need to approve the motion yeah. as amended. Um, okay. Now we have the motion, uh, calling the motion as amended. Is there any discussion on that? All those in favor? Okay. All right. Other than that, I'm All those not in favor? Then. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Did that pass? Yes. Pass yes. Four to one? Did you? Did four to one. You were opposed, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, number six. Uh, uh, now, does anyone have any question on the remaining uh -uh. is I'd, um, okay I'd like to discuss the parking spaces but uh, to do that let's I move to approve the waiver for EFIS and planter islands second any discussion all those in favor okay I move to approve the waiver for the 179 parking spaces. Second. <coughs> okay. You uh, as, as I look at the parking space issue, the real driver in this, I think, gets down to the chief, the fire chief, and building occupancy, not necessarily the square footage of the building. I guess that may be the way it's designed. But if we drop, if we have a current occupancy, and I don't know what that is, and you're dropping back to 172 spaces, and you look at your average attendance size, do you work with that reduction? And if you don't, what's your alternate building, what's your alternate parking plan? Do you have an alternate parking plan? Currently, that, that I guess that goes back to the parking count that the church has been been checking up for the last few months. They at the 60% capacity parking they're at now at the rush hour of, of on Sunday, they're occupying about 65 cars or parking spaces. So the 102 still meets that requirement. It would only have been on the one or two opportunity or one or two occasions a year that they. <laughs> When they have <laughs> a, uh, when they have some sort of function, that it gets close to capacity. Okay. So I'm looking at 62. So I would say that the average service size is magic math, uh, between 130 to 150, uh, in the sanctuary at one time. A little bit higher than that, but okay. That's that's all I had on that. Uh, I I'd done some statistics on it but that's all right i move right. to oh i already got the motion on right anybody motion. have any other comments <coughs> okay all those in favor of the waiver on the parking spaces opposed okay all right uh, item last nine. one uh move to approve the waiver for the dumpster 
Actually, no waiver is needed for the dumpster. There was only one outstanding item. They just needed to provide some landscaping along the rear of the dumpster. They've agreed to do that. So okay. that actually moves over to it, it will meet the requirements. And they will put in the landscaping around the three sides. Okay. Okay, let me have a shot at the final motion. Well, let me just ask a quick question. Carolyn, have we covered everything that needed to be addressed on the waivers? Yes, ma'am. That is everything. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay, I move to approve the site plan for the church at Trophy Lakes, 800 Trophy Club Drive, applicant Shane Harris, RGA Architects, with the following waivers. Church building height, up with the following waivers approved. Church building height, steeple height, gymnasium height, masonry wall with, as amended, Buffering, as amended, EFAS, Planter Islands, and 179 parking spaces. Also, with the understanding, let me find that note. That each phase must be completed in its entirety and phases may not be piecemealed. Do I have that correct? Did we Makes get that to me. everything that needed to be? Oh, second. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I was watching. Shannon I'm just checking with there. Patricia and Shannon here oh, to make sure. And I'm reading as she's. Okay. okay. Yeah. We just want to make sure we've got it all mm -hmm. that we need in there. <coughs> yes. <coughs> okay. Is there any discussion? No discussion? Okay. All those in favor? All right. Thank you all very Thank much. You. Thank you. We wish you great fundraising so yes. phase one and phase two can be done at the same time. Okay. Item number 12. Move on. Or do you need a break? <laughs> do it. I need, I don't want to get out of here. Okay. Item number 12. Consider and take appropriate action regarding council approval to proceed with the issuance of a request for qualifications to solicit a facilities management feasibility study and design services. Mr. Sly. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, what I'm asking for approval from the council tonight is to proceed with a, an RFQ, soliciting professional services to consider or, or, or conduct a feasibility study of municipal facilities that we have currently and what those needs may be in the future uh, and really and, and to then pursue design uh, efforts based on council approval of whatever we decide uh, after the feasibility study. Uh, this is obviously a, a, a the pre preliminary step to uh, a future police department or whatever <coughs> morphs from that feasibility study uh, as we've talked on many times we we want to try to get all of the the planning and design efforts of whatever it is our future holds uh, so that if and when we get to that position of issuing long-term debt for municipal facilities we can turn dirt and and I know we'll have some uh, additional discussion about that in our upcoming retreat but I would like approval to at least solicit qualifications for professional services. <coughs> I, I move to uh, proceed with the issuance of a request for qualifications to solicit a facilities management feasibility study and design services. Second. Any discussion? Uh, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. If I could, I guess a question back to uh, town manager Sly. So is this I'm not seeing an obligation to award an RFP. We'll come to the council for that. 
We'll, it's we'll not do an our. Uh, is this an RFQ? Well, it's, it's an RFQ. Then, and then the next thing from there is uh, is is an RFP. Once once you select that process, so is it an, is it an obli obligation to take the you next step? You can't do an RFP on design um, services. <coughs> it's an RFQ. You can do an RFQ, but then you got to define your scope for RFQ. That's where I'm getting to. If I lost you. Uh, I'm kind of glancing I just, over. I just want to make time. sure if I approve this motion to move forward with this to go out to RFQs that we're not committing committing the council to make an obligation to award to an firm and proceed to the next step because that's dollars. Uh, what I intend to do is go out and and solicit the, the, the qualifications, interview them, and then come to the council to award uh, the to hire the, the professional the vendor service. to to get to get the work done. I mean, I, okay. There's no cost. What Mr. Sly is asking for tonight is permission from the council to officially uh, solicit uh, qualifications from qualified firms to interview those firms and discuss with them our needs and the future planning then we have to meet under state law we have to go with the most qualified right, that's uh, vendor to provide those services we begin negotiations or discussions regarding what those services are uh, finalize the scope if we are unable to reach a decision or a, an appropriate fee for those services then we go to the next qualified uh, vendor of services and at that point we become the council and explain this is the firm this is the cost this is what they're going to propose to do all we're asking tonight is for the council to give staff direction to be able to go and and solicit for start RFQs. that process and, and as i remember to um we have five hundred thousand dollars that's right that's to help it. support uh the this search not the search. <laughs> well, I, I know, but yeah, you know, I'm just I, you, know what I mean. you know what I mean. I no, do. I know. I but, do. But we do have some. When we come back to you money. for the scope and costs, right. that's exactly where it'll get paid for. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, any other discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Okay. Do you want to tell us why? Hour. Okay. <laughs> Later. Thursday. Okay. Um, all right. Con item 13. Consider and take appropriate action regarding the approval of a joint election agreement and contract for election services with Denton County and authorizing the mayor or her designee to execute all necessary documents. Now, we did get a change. Oh, that was just a new runoff date in there? Yes, they changed their runoff date in the proposed contract to match the area county so that everybody would be on the same runoff date. Okay. Mayor, I move to approve the, uh, where did it go, election agreement and contract for election services with Denton County and authorizing yourself or designee to execute all necessary documents as amended at the dais. Second. Okay, the motion's been made and seconded. Um, all those in favor? Okay, I should have asked for a discussion, but all right, item 14, consider and take appropriate action appointing two council members to serve on the audit subcommittee. <coughs> Mr. Aguilera. The audit subcommittee, uh, as of the last election, is we're, we're needing two members from council that we've done in the past. We've always uh, had two council members serve on the audit committee to oversee the audit itself, to communicate with the auditors to um, go over internal controls, that kind of thing. Um, if there's any questions about what type of work the audit committee does, I can answer that. But in general, you help oversee the financial uh, stat status of the, of the organization, and you also oversee, help oversee that we have proper internal controls in place Kay. for reporting. OK. 
Okay. Where I have Last year, I think uh, you and Margie Cantrell served on the audit committee. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be the mayor, but. Does it, um, they in the other years they always said I needed to do it. If I don't need to do it, that's fine too. <laughs> I didn't see anything in the charter that required. Not the charter. I guess I. I don't know. Like that's the official handbook. No, I, it wasn't that. It was the audit people were saying. <laughs> I think, yeah, they may have recommended that the mayor be on yeah. there, but I, I, there's nothing in writing on the town, per okay. the town, that says okay. that. I Do I? You've got a busy, busy agenda. Yeah. <laughs> Do um, I have anyone who is would like to be part of the audit committee? I'll volunteer for that. Good. I was going to appoint you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to point you. You're lucky you volunteered. You know, you know better than that. No, <laughs> you want money? No. I'm not going to be on it if Bill Rose is on it. I don't have Thank that you. much time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I would like to appoint no. uh, oh, Councilman, no, Councilman Tiffany. I'm, I just, I just did the I'll go ahead and do it. <laughs> hey, you're out of a job. Well, I guess the question is, does, does the mayor have time or does she does she want to ser serve on it again? Yeah, yeah do you want year? to do that? We I, usually uh, have the one meeting. That is we it do it. It's I mean, usually just one meeting at the conclusion of the audit. Oh, I can do that. I'll do, I mean, unless you want no, if you when is it? <laughs> I, we don't have it scheduled yet. <laughs> Go for it. It's it will be sometime. <laughs> it will be sometime in March. Okay. All right. You guys, Danny, I'll work with you. Will you work with me? Of course. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. <laughs> do we need to vote on that, Patricia? Yes. All okay. Right. So, Mayor, I make a motion then to. Appointing Councilman Mayor and Council Councilwoman <laughs> Tiffany to the audit subcommittee. Oh, are we voting? A you want to second. Second it, <laughs> I seconded it. You're going to second it. Okay. <laughs> Is there any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Okay, great. Thank you, guys. One, a one day I appreciate it. Do that. One day. March. And if they need anything from me, you can know where to find me. Okay. Um, Consider and take appropriate action regarding a proposed charter amendment to add one council member. It's just slide or? Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, you've been submitted, you have, the, the Charter Review Commission submitted their amendments. I know that there was some discussion amongst the council about adding the seventh member or having a trigger, trigger mechanism. And tonight is really the only scheduled meeting that we have before we're going to ask you to call that election in February. So I had to put it on the agenda tonight. If you wanted to have that discussion, this really falls in the lap of Council Member Rose. Uh, and I'm going to turn the floor over to Council Member Rose and let him make his argument or state his case. And we'll comply with whatever the council's direction is. Well, I'll make it easy. I'll put it on. I'll make a motion, and uh, if I get a second, we'll discuss it. If not, we don't. Okay, I move to add uh, one council member uh, amendment uh, proposition to go forth for the charter election in May, and that council member would be added at the November 13 election. I'll second. It basically, uh, following the discussion that we had uh, last time on this, uh, Councilman Strother was talking about trigger points and, uh, and populations. And so what I did, and it's in the packet here, what I did is I took a look at the populations uh, data back when we added the, the vote for the mayor at the uh, 2000, May 2009 election. I'm not going to read those numbers to you, oh. uh, but long story short <coughs> is we if if it was approved if the ad council member had the ad council member had the vote was approved at the November 13 election I mean and, and it occurs at the November 13 election you still wind up with a single vote representing more citizens than what was represented back before. They added the vote to the mayor. Uh, the ratio, we're looking at roughly one to 1,500. Uh, the smallest, I went out and 
studied some small cities below 6,000 population. The smallest one that has a, a mayor and six council members is Nassau Bay. Uh, the ratio there is 1 to 584. Uh, eight, then I looked at cities between a population of, uh, wait a minute, uh, oh, looking at cities that have uh, less than 6,000 but have seven members on council, and there are eight Texas cities that do that, and the average population there the ratio is 1 to 672. The rest of that sheet is basically uh, supporting data. Uh, in the TML survey of 2008, only five out of 256 cities reported having a mayor voting with five other council members. So our current current operation is uh, in rarefied atmosphere. Unique. Unique is a nice way to define it. Uh, and then looking at 36 Texas cities I found had a population between 9,300 rough numbers and 1,300. And, this, and th those population numbers are from uh, citydata.com. But uh, more cities in that size range have seven council members, including the mayor, than either of any of the other categories combined. So uh, based on that and the information that I've uh, put forth before, I think that the citizens should be allowed to vote on this and discuss those issues and let them decide whether they'd like to add a council member or not. That's, I've said enough. Oh, I made, let me brief the, all the red line in it. I uh, started the project and wrote it so it would be effective and put the effective dates in it and sent it to the attorney. And she went, wrote back and said, don't think this is required for this reason or that reason and so that got scratched and then there were some other issues and she said I'm not sure that you really need that because of this in the state law or that and so that got scratched so that's the reason for the uh, the red lines a lot of the red lines and I appreciate the attorney's work and to me it highlights the fact that writing a charter amendment without an attorney's help is rarefied atmosphere also Well, I just, I guess I just have a question. If we have a, um, do more council people equal better government? Good are we, are we going to have better government because of another person? Well, your perfect representation would be seven people in the community and all seven of them on council. So you could make the case <laughs> that as you move to a, 250,000 member city and you still only have seven people on council that your representation uh, if you look at the representation side of it you could say well no I, d I don't have the good representation that I had before all these other people moved in but in my dynamic it's as I look at it it's not a matter of population it's a matter of the working relationship in the body it's a matter of skill sets it's a matter of the knowledge level uh, it's a matter of, as I talked about, the open meetings or the voting requirement, quorum requirements and what you can do under the open meetings and, and work your way around it. Uh, the standard thing that I read is councils are made up of either five, seven, or nine. And uh, um, I, I guess all I'm uh, suggesting is that uh, the, uh, ch uh, again, the Charter Review Committee recommended that in the near future for the council to consider another council person at the same time considering districts or um, uh, whatever, which we also had somebody even speak to that, that would then spread the representation around the town. So do you do both of those at the same time? <laughs> I would or, um, but. The point is, I think getting representation around the full town is more critical, really, than one additional um, council person. I, uh, when I was in high school, I was on the debating team, and were you? you, you <laughs> of <You're> course. <laughs> 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 and you know, the, th the thing about being on the debating team is you never knew which side of, <laughs> of an argument you were going to have to uh, 
a fight. So, uh, and I'm kind of that way on this issue. Uh, on the negative side, the uh, Charter Review Commission uh, said they'd like to address it later because of the sheer number of uh, of, of uh, amendments that were on the ballot. But the other side is we're a growing community and we have a lot of qualified people and uh, as, as qualified people get elected and you don't have a bunch of old geezers like me up here who have a lot of time available, uh, Clint's gone tonight, he has a, uh, he's up in Seattle on his business and I, and I know Glenn travels a lot and uh, good representation uh, requires that we have some folks here. Uh, I am vehemently opposed to districts, uh, not because for any other reason other than when we go to districts, then we get involved with the Department of Justice and voter rights, and don't we do all that, Patricia? Don't we have to make a lot of reports and stuff? Yes, we do. And we have to gerrymander districts so that we have uh, all of these uh, different, so that we're not violating any voter laws. And that bothers me. I don't, I mean, we're not, we don't need somebody from Washington down here looking over our shoulder about the way we run our town. So I don't have a problem with seven people. I don't have a problem with six people. Uh, though I would probably like seven people because when everybody's here, we dang sure wouldn't have a tie vote. <laughs> and, uh, which, which, how often have we had tie votes? Just once since I've been on. Yeah, yeah. that's the only time I, for two years. Oh, just one financial question. Big t- What's the cost of a council person? I say nothing. Yes, sir. Sure is. Well, there's yes, there's some ancillary costs. Somebody's cost getting for, my share. Well, you're not taking advantage. There's some ancillary costs for travel and training and that kind of thing. Okay, well, what is it? It's in the budget. Per uh, maybe, but what is it per per council person? I'll have to get back to you. I, Please do. I don't know. <laughs> if, if I could, I'd Off like the top to. Of my head. No, I don't care. If I could, I'd like to address the issue of council member and districts at the same time the problem and i think i mentioned it before when uh, when they were doing their presentation the real problem with that is that if you go and study charters where you have the council members you know the council member in the district that goes in the same section and so the difficulty is the difficulty is when you do do that you wind up with the possibility of having conflicting charter amendments being on the ballot at the same time while you're while you're trying to oh. do this wow. so the, it, it, in my in, it's not personally I, you can <coughs> probably do it but there are an awful lot of pitfalls in my mind as I look at other charters to try to do that at one time I think if your if your thought process is yes we should go to seven at some point then you need to do that separate from districts it's either that or you do districts first and add the council person later, would be my thought. That's a really good point, because we know how it can happen that you have conflicting things, which is what got us into here. When we put the may- when they put that the mayor would vote, the intention was that there would be another council member, council member and that failed. And so that puts us in the position where we need to have four votes to pass anything which can be a problem you know if, if somebody's missing all four have to vote. so so we do have that issue um i'm of mixed feelings on it myself um i certainly would not want this to apply to the next election because then we would be electing four of the council in one election which is not a good idea um the way that's set up is the they would we dis- we had the discussion about whether you could do it at the same election. This would be approved if it's approved. Would happen the approval would happen May. Then you would they would come on in November and they would serve roughly a year and a half, and that would align them with Councilman Struthers' uh, next election. So then they would then the sequence in town would be two 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 or two two three, is the way the voting pattern would go the way it's currently written and and just uh, my crack finance director just kind of <laughs> whispered in my ear the cost would be one penny on a tax rate what i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> I, think, 
I, may have I to, knew that was a good question. I, I, I may have to withdraw my motion. <laughs> I knew that was a good what? question. Thank you for your silver. <laughs> oh, goodness. Like I said, okay. the, 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 purpose of the, the, pur <laughs> the purpose is to get it to the citizens and let them have their vote on it. So. That was a joke, Mr. Lamont. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please. Stop rubbing my chair. <laughs> Okay, is there any other discussion? Oh, I guess another question you could ask ourselves as we're debating this, is this a want or a need for our town? I need a vacation, I think it's a need. <laughs> well, you know, that, that's an interesting thing because you made that comment and you made that comment now. And my question is, does putting a seventh person on here say that the responsibility isn't there for everyone no, no, no. all the I mean yes it happens that people can't be at a meeting but that's not it's not supposed to happen right you know I mean it does that's life but my point is I don't want to create a situation where we've made it where people don't have to be worried about coming because somebody else is going to cover it just wonder about that that's my okay I call question I call for the question. Oh, please don't say that. Now we have to vote on calling the question. That. Okay. Hey, just, just do it and let's go. It is All right. quarter till 11. Okay. You're and I have to listen to you you're talk. Sh you're starting on calling the question. All right. But all of those in favor of calling the question. Good. Okay. All of those in favor of the motion to place this on the ballot. Opposed? Okay. Oh, passes three to two. Motion no, it fails. doesn't. Takes four. Takes four. Well, there's six. Here. Because the no, charter indicates it takes four affirmative votes. Takes four affirmative. No, for everything. Everything, that's one of the issues, is yeah, that everything that we do well, takes four. Well, y'all want to vote again, you just saw what the problem is. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, that's we, that's we, we can we can reconsider, but it would have to be somebody that was on the prevailing side that would request for the reconsideration. So one of the two who voted. Are you trying in, to influence No, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell you, if you want parliamentary, one of the two people who voted against it can ask to reconsider the prior motion, and we're back into it. The charter says, time has why does the charter say four when you have a majority and if you don't have to require a super majority? That sounds like that's what, there, there's the amendment that needs that's to be I made to the charter. <laughs> that it, it, I, I absolutely know <laughs> this to be the, the case. That was the change at the last charter election was to make a quorum four. And I think it was because the expectation was that there would be seven council members, but that's just my recollection of the discussion no, I think it's always been four and it has been four so that if you you don't think so I no, it to, didn't I, used to be four before okay. it was always a majority and that the last charter uh, election it was changed to four. anything that has to pass must have four affirmative votes regardless of the number of people present right. Because exactly. we've had only four people here, and everything you've adopted had to a budget, I think, two years ago, where a couple people were out of town, and it took four votes yeah. to do it. Mm -hmm. Who came up with that amendment, Bill Rose? <laughs> I don't. I don't recollect. <laughs> okay. Well. <laughs> you know, I. I really don't want to re reconsider this. I mean, uh, I'm not I'm not really in, in, in favor of going to a se seventh person. I don't think it's needed with the amount of people that we have here. It was put to the people before and it failed, uh, which has since caused some of the problems here. Um, uh, I did, you know, I would, okay. and what I, I guess I have where the question is now, which, and for some reason I've, failed to recall that mandatory four vote process is that I would have had because the charter committee never considered that piece and the charter review about the four and they did yeah. that. And, and the reason that it's four is why this works with six council members you know a tie vote fails it's like having a I mean if you had seven members you had you know, it's it's the same as having a seven-member board 
with four people voting. Yeah, but what, it wasn't a tie vote. No, it the oh, majority I, was I in favor that. of this and you know, stuff like that. When you have six and six present, but when you when you're missing one or something like that, like we want to have with Councilman Schroeder, then like I said, then the motion fails, even though the majority of the council present wanted to move forward with it. So. No, if 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 Clint would have been here. He would have four votes. He, he would have been, right. He could have voted for perhaps, it. or it would have been tied. And are, yeah. you know the the, the danger the okay. danger is Councilman Struthers is is exactly what happened three years ago when you adopted a budget. I mean you were adopting the budget and the tax rate, and you had four members. If you'll recall, those of you who were here, there were four of you on this dais yeah. to consider, and you had to vote unanimously to adopt the budget and the tax rate. No, uh, <laughs> she did originally. No, she well, was no, no, it it it, it passed, yeah. but that but yeah. that was the issue is that if you did yeah. not yeah. Unanimous, unanimously adopt it, it would have reverted to the prior year's rate and budget. Right. So I mean, you're saying this is the last time that we'll have a chance to put any possible amendments on the election deal? What what's the timetable when that has to be filed? We'll, we'll we will bring the um, ordinance calling the election at the 20 February 25th meeting. So, I'd prefer not to be doing that in the council meeting if we're adding a ballot <laughs> proposition, uh, but that is when you will have everything in front of you. All the charter review commission amendments and the like. Okay, so in reality, if you were making Vegas odds with a six-member council, it's like the double O's on the roulette wheel. The no's have an advantage. Mm -hmm. yes. The house has an advantage that way. Well, yes. so we, we, under, under the six, you do. You do. You voted you no yeah. too. Uh, okay, the, let's move on. Uh, I need to make one quick point. I want to give uh, credit for the uh, for Attorney Adams. I pulled up the old charter. It was three. Let's. Okay. Let's All right. Um, item 16, town manager slides update. I'll be brief. <laughs> I had community development. I have nothing to report. I thought we might have had some applicants applications filed by tonight, so that's why I put it on the agenda. I don't, so I, I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, I want to uh, correct the record from the last time we talked about the 114-170 project. Uh, I reported correctly that Denton County Precinct reported that they would be done by April of this year, and and several of you made comment that that there's just <laughs> absolutely no way. Uh, we went out and talked to the contractor himself this year, uh, this past week, and and uh, we're anticipating September 13 as a completion date. I still think that's a little aggressive. They're in phase three. Is that or is that just to complete phase three of this project? Yeah. Completion, completion. Yeah. Yeah, September and they 13th. said sooner. You said sooner than that they were gonna. You may have seen some uh, some construction signs along the Solana Kirkwood area. Uh, yes. yes. What that, is that that was simply some some shoulder repair. They've already done. They're in and out. There's there's no, you know, they're not going to divert our traffic or anything like that. But they're they're already have completed that. Um, well, they'll open some main lanes probably pri prior to the September 13th. Right. Yeah. Well, that's exactly right. On the on the 114 170 project, they'll open uh, the 170 westbound flyover uh, and the 170 eastbound coming in. In the uh, uh, w we would anticipate that in the next 30 days or so. Yeah. Um, they still got quite a bit of work to do on the 114 through fair uh, on into Roanoke, but uh, uh, they will start opening up components of, of that construction project as they can. Golf carts, here we come. <laughs> and they're going to, did they paint the bridges? They have not painted them to date, but that's so They're going to paint it. them before they open it so we don't have to pay yes. all that extra money. Okay. Yes. Yeah, they'll paint before they open them to. Right. To uh, that'll be one of the last things they do oh. prior to opening the. Uh, okay. We'll be retreating the end of this week, Thursday and Friday, and and agenda's posted. Um, we started field work with the audit team today. Today, so they're in town and doing their thing. Uh, 
right? Yeah, it, well, less than three months. Uh, CCPD is cracking. Uh, they've got a meeting Wednesday night in addition to the, the neighborhood meeting that I've got scheduled with uh, uh, Fresh Meadow on the, uh, the drainage project out there. Uh, CCPD will also be meeting that night and then has a public hearing scheduled for February 20th. And on the 25th, they'll come in and make their report and ask the council to consider uh, calling an election to create the CCPD and uh, get rid of the of the 4A, dissolve the 4A. That's all I have. Okay. All right. Um, item 17, Mayor and Council updates regarding training, et cetera. Um, we had the Denton County Mayor's Crime Prevention Luncheon. Uh, that's all the Denton County Mayors and the Chiefs. Uh, Chief was with me, um, and we discussed a number of uh, initiatives that different police departments were taking. Did you want to add anything about that, Chief? No? Okay. Uh, just there were different initiatives that uh, were being undertaken by the different police areas, and an opportunity to share some information as to what uh, was being successful or not. Um, and, and interestingly, there was a, somebody that, you know, talked a lot about doing this uh, community policing, and I was sitting there saying, you know, yeah, we've been doing that already. <laughs> so it was really good. Um, uh, Tarrant County Women in Government, um, that was a, a kickoff luncheon with uh, um, a lot of the, the mayors and other council women from the, uh, this area. Uh, they're trying to establish that organization. Um, I had an opportunity to have a good discussion with uh, Mayor Price from Fort Worth and that too, and I think that's gonna help us with some other things. Um, and then of course the elected officials conference, which was this weekend, uh, outstanding again. I thought it was really good. I, I really learned a great deal. And, and I don't know whether it's more beneficial the actual classes or some of the conversation that you have in between the classes because it's, it's really a great opportunity to get a lot of information and a lot of advice on how to tackle various problems. And I'd like to just give you guys the opportunity to comment on anything if you would like. I mean, this is mayor and council updates, so. Well, Did mayor, you? I was just gonna add is that uh, uh, when you were gone and others, there was a Northeast Leadership Forum held at the Hearst Conference okay. Center on the first. Uh, oh, right. And, uh, J.D. Granger was our keynote. Of course, everybody was expecting uh, Congressman Granger, yeah. but uh, yeah. it, uh, he took it well, and uh, Mayor Trevino kind of rubbed it in a little bit, being the way Mayor he Trevino is. Does. <laughs> he had fun with it, but it was a good group, packed house, so a lot, lot of good information, and, and the neat thing that J.D. did talk about is that the Trinity River Vision is moving forward, and uh, you're about ready to start seeing some real things starting to happen. I mean, That's the I first yeah, phase will be too. constructing some, a couple of the bridges over dry land because it's less expensive to build them on dry land than it is in a canal. But then, that's, <laughs> then the next phase will be the diversion canal to connect it, which will create the island. Um, but it's uh, pretty impressive. And it's moving forward. So, great. That's the that's I'll, the first I'll, time I'd heard of of the of the vision. Oh, really? Yeah. I I had no idea what it was. Boy, was I impressed. Trinity, yeah. yeah. I'd heard. Yeah, that. we heard about it yeah. down there, but cool. yeah, it's it's going to be pretty awesome. It'll be the river walk, and it may eventually another in, in thirty years. Twenty twenty is what they yeah. said. <laughs> I wonder uh, if I'll be alive. May I say something about the conference, please? Um, and I did actually go, and I did go to the meetings. Um, but I did go to the water meeting, and I just say this because we all know it, but water is the number one issue for the state of Texas, period. But you know what the real issue is? It's distribution of the water from the east to the cows in the west, and that's the cost, that's the issue, and that's all about the buying and the selling of the water. And I and conservation of course is a big part of that but i just think that we really don't appreciate that water is a big deal 
And then I guess the other thing that I would like to say is, um, what was it? Oh, yes. I met with um, cities, 10,000 and more, 10,000 to 50. And I had the opportunity to say and sing great praises for our roundabout. And people ask about it and <laughs> said, you need to call the town of Trophy Club. They were real excited about our roundabout. Cool. And it, you know what? We have a great roundabout. So there you go. It's a great thing. So it's fun. Yeah. Good, good stuff. You got more anything? Just really, real briefly, one of the sessions was on uh, Open Meetings Act, oh. uh, winding its way toward the Supreme Court. Uh, caught a piece of local application from attorney Scott Houston down there, TML attorney. Uh, it seems that coming into a meeting and setting them back with a quorum from your counsel and not being on the agenda, prior placed on the agenda, even if you don't speak, but if something that affects your organization is discussed, you're in violation of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Yeah, that was a very frustrating presentation. <laughs> One of the interesting parts about it that I thought was really interesting is that they pointed out how the legislature is not subject to open meetings. The state legislature is not subject to that act. So the hope of getting them to step up and make it either clearer or a little give you a little more latitude is not there because they don't understand the impact of it. Um, and then the newspapers bug them, so. Oh, may I say one more thing before, I, I, just for your information, uh, tomorrow night I'm meeting with the uh, team for beginning to plan the July the 4th parade. And this is very similar to our little, our presentation, our full morning presentation last week is how do you create a town where people are connected and they feel passionate about their town. And you do that by using people within your town. Your people are our resources and get them engaged in making things happen. And so this particular group meeting tomorrow night is being led by a um, town resident with several residents and their vision is to have a fantastic parade July the 4th including bands all right Isn't that exciting okay so get ready that's what we're gonna do all right great thanks July the 4th. so if you have a float <laughs> get a, <coin>. <laughs> a golf cart a golf cart a golf cart. okay item 18 items of future agendas speaking of that mm -hmm. <coughs> anybody okay only the one I spoke with you Oh yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Item 19: uh, uh, the council to convene into executive session, pursuant to Texas Government Code annotated subchapter 551, personnel matters, to discuss the appointment, of employment, evaluation, reassignment duties, discipline, or dismissal of a public officer employee. Number one is the resignation of the town secretary uh, Shanda Prater. Number two, potential search for a new town secretary. RMO and a potential appointment of an interim. So I would like to use the restroom. <laughs> okay, so we that. <laughs> yeah. we'll put that on tape. Carolyn. I'm going to start having more fun. Carolyn. Already um, call it reconvene into a regular session at 11:28 p.m. And uh, we'll enter with our items to consider and take appropriate action regarding the executive session. Does anyone want to make a motion? Go, Bill. Right. Mayor, I'll make a motion uh, to uh, accept the, re regretfully accept the resignation of our town secretary, uh, Shannon DePrater, uh, tonight with an effective date of March 1st. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. All those, any discussion? All those in favor? Regretfully. Yep, we have to. I guess you know. There you go, Shannon. <laughs> well, what happens if we say no? 
Yeah, I always wondered about that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Don't accept it. Okay. You want me to do it again? Okay. Sure. <laughs> Mayor, uh, I'd like to make another motion to uh, uh, to appoint, if needed, uh, April Riling uh, as the interim town secretary slash RMO. Second. Um, any discussion? Do we need an effective date on that? No, that's if needed, if, if we have a gap. Okay, all those in favor? Okay. Mayor, I make a motion that we adjourn. Okay, we adjourned at 1130.